Good afternoon, curling fans, and welcome to the 2024 Newfoundland Tankard. We are broadcasting live from the Remax here in St. John's, Newfoundland. It's a frigid afternoon here in St. John's as we do the first game of draw four. Uh, temperatures outside are about minus 30, but I assure you, things are going to heat up in this building in a hurry. Uh, we have a murky matchup here in draw four. It is Team Andrew Simmons against Team Ryan McNeil Lambswood. Both these teams are on top of the standings at 3 0. This is going to be a great game. In the broadcast booth today, it's Steve Sporty Bragg alongside four time tankered winner Mark Noseworthy. Mark, what do you expect to see here today? Oh, well, well, Steve, I expect both teams to play quite well in this game. Both teams are 3 0, which tells me they got the ice figured out pretty good. And I'm expecting a pretty tight tit-for-tat battle all afternoon. Mark, you can't win the tankard on a Wednesday, but you certainly can put yourself in a good position to get that number one seed. The winner of this game goes to 4-0 and and is in a, a pretty good spot to try and chase down that number one seed, which gets you a direct buy right to the final. Well, that's right, Steve. And, like, this is a big game. To get to 4-0, and you're... Everybody else, I think, outside of uh, Nathan Young has a, at least one loss. So the winner of this game would be in the driver's seat. Uh, not looking too far ahead. Number one seed would be a bonus, but to get to 4-0, and you got to get to the playoffs. You can't win it if you're not in the playoffs. So you got to make sure you're finishing top three. But to get to 4-0 and for one of these teams is going to put them in a, a pretty good spot right now with uh, four games left for either team. So we'll see how it works out. Lambswood's uh, first draw was in the rings. Uh, they've exchanged a couple of shots, and now Andrew uh, Simmons is going to throw up a corner guard. And uh, we'll see how this works out. But so I expect both teams to play very well. Absolutely. Andrew Simmons has got uh, Alex Smith, a guy you and I know very well. Uh, he is playing at lead for this 2024 tankard. Andrew's regularly key jewer suffered an injury during the Rick Rousseau Classic and has been out for the year. So Alex is filling in there. He's throwing lead rocks, but I think he's in the head with Andrew Simmons, and he's put up the nice corner guard there on a second rock. Uh, that's correct, uh, Steve. Uh, Alex plays lead. Uh, he has pretty good draw weight, and then they put him in the head when uh, Andrew Simmons goes to shoot. So that leaves two young guys sweeping, which is probably the uh, optimal way for them to work that team with uh, Stephen Trickett and Colin Thomas on the brooms. Absolutely. So, the, both uh, teams, both teams, I should say, before not to cut you off, Steve. Both teams have strong sweeping, so you should see a lot of nice come arounds, and uh, both teams have uh, good communication, and uh, I, I expect to see a lot of nice shots made, just like this one here. That's a nice shot by the second Graham Weagle, who tucked one in behind the corner guard. Graham hails from Chester, Nova Scotia, and now we're going to see Andrew Simmons uh, run his. Uh, corner guard right back on that rock just delivered by Graham. So, Mark, they haven't overthrown this, and uh, they're on and off it, so it looks pretty good. Uh, he got a dandy. But, again, not overthrowing it. That's a, that tells you that's a sign of two experienced teams. That know how to play. You don't need to. Uh, you don't need to overthrow some of these shots. The ice on the wings is, uh, tends to be a little straighter as you up your weight a bit. And uh, we did this sheet this morning in this morning's draw, and there was a good curl from the hog line in with draw weight. But once you got up past uh, back line weight, the rocks tended to run a bit. So big shot here now to try to make sure that uh, Lambs which stays in the rings on this shot, which seems to be the case. A nice shot there by Graham Weagle. And, uh, Mark, why don't we take a minute to meet the teams. Uh, Ryan McNeil Lambswood on his team. Uh, the lead is Aaron Feltham. Uh, second is Graham Weagle. Third is Dan Bruce. And, of course, uh, this team is skipped by Ryan McNeil Lambswood. And uh, for the Andrew Simmons team, the lead this week is Alex Smith. Uh, second is Steve Trickett. Third, Colin Thomas. And, of course, skip Andrew Simmons. Yeah, I just want to point out with the uh, Lambswood team, there's no Briar experience, but between the four of them, they have uh, nine juniors and a mixed double nationals. 
and on Simmons' team, uh, Andrew and Alex Smith have both both had prior experience. And there's a couple of juniors between uh, Colin Thomas and Stephen Trickett. And it should be noted that uh, Andrew Simmons has played in two club nationals, and in 2015 they were the national champions. I'd also like to point out that uh, Alex Smith's lone briar came 35 years ago. So he would love to re get a repeat on that one. Well, as you know, he's our teammate this year, and uh, he had this opportunity to play, and he was super excited. Uh, I don't think there's too many curlers who can say they've had that far a gap between briars, and he's got a great shot playing on this Andrew Simmons team this week. One thing you mentioned about Andrew Simmons, he was the club champion in 2015. He won that national at the Hunt Club in Ottawa with our other teammate, Mark Healy, Corey Eward, and Keith Jewer. And in talking to him, he told me that his wife won the Christmas sweepstakes this year. Uh, he finally got his jacket framed uh, with, the, with the heart and the gold medal in a big frame. Uh, sent me a picture of it, and he was pretty excited about that. So he's going to be in tough at Christmas next year. Perfect. Anyway, the, Simmons has a, a chance to get around his corner, but uh, I think it might have been a little... A little wide of the broom here, or a little too much ice. Pretty wide open. And Mark, I'm directly behind here, and that, that rock is pretty much wide open, so Lammy is going to uh, make the hit and probably try to roll over uh, towards the center line on this rock. Yeah, I think they just like to roll in a couple of feet and try to keep Andrew, Andrew Simmons away from the, uh, the corner. So the rock has been delivered from Dan Bruce here, who's the third for Brian McNeil Lambs. We just celebrated the birthday a couple of weeks ago on June or January 14th. Hopes to have a celebration here on Sunday afternoon at the Remax Center if, if things go well. Yeah, I expect to see his dad coming in from Cornerbrook. Dennis doesn't miss too many of big games with his kids. Yeah, you mentioned Dennis. Uh, Dennis has played in a couple of seniors himself. He played in the 2015 and 2019 Newfoundland seniors with Gary Oak. So the apple didn't fall far, far from the tree. Dan uh, Dan is a good curler, as is his father. Well, even even with uh, Ryan Lambs, with his dad's in town, and he's coached at a couple of juniors, and uh, he's just sitting over over from us here, nodding his head in agreement. <laughs> You gotta like a person who just agrees with you all the time, right? <laughs> just, it just makes it easier on everybody. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're down to skip rocks here, Mark. It's been a pretty uneventful end, clean, clean end, and Lammy's coming back to uh, throw, I believe, his first rock here. Well, Ryan's kept him trying to. His goal was to keep uh, Simmons away from that corner, and uh, Simmons has had a couple of chances to try to get underneath, and they've just nosed it as opposed to the roll. But now uh, a hit here and roll back into the middle. Yeah, Mark, that's his preferred shot. He wants to keep the play away from that corner guard yeah. now and uh, try to avoid Andrew being able to get if the This was line. his last Rocky in, in the end. He, he'd probably want to roll behind to try to get a force on. But right now, he just wants to roll to the middle. Aaron felt him, uh, excuse me, Danny Bruce is indicating it uh, might be a little soft, but he makes the shot, Mark, on the nose. No, that's fine. But a uh, Andrew's, Andrew's going to have, uh, Simmons going to have a, a chance here at a hit and roll. Now, he might say if he can't get to it, he might just play it wide open and roll to the other side and, t and be happy with try to take a blank. But if he rolls behind that corner guard, he's going to force Lambswood to make a nice come around freeze or get in front of it for shot rock to, to uh, make it tough for Simmons to get a deuce. In this situation, I believe Simmons would like to get two or a blank, and Lambs would, would like to force him to take one to get the hammer. It's not really set up for a, a steal situation bearing a, you know, outright miss. So we'll see what happens here now on this rock. Mark, you mentioned all the junior championships. By my count, I think... Lammy had five, but none is a skip. Uh, two with Dan Bruce, two with Greg Smith, and one with Greg Blyde. Like I said, uh, he said his father is sitting next to us, so if I got that stat wrong, he can correct me, but he is nodding in agreement. And now he finds himself skipping in this 2024 Newfoundland tanker. Oh, Andrew makes a beauty. 
in behind the corner. Now all of a sudden two points is on. I so. tell you what, Andrew Simmons makes a lot of rocks, and that's another beauty right out of the gates, right out of the blocks, makes a nice roll, and it's going to make Ryan make a nice touch shot, well, draw in there, and try and nullify that counter in behind the corner guard. Where Alex Smith is a, a teammate the last couple of years of mine, I, I, I like to think of this shot as great line call by Alex Smith. All about the line call, Mark. It's all, all about, about the, the line, line call. call. Absolutely. So Lammy's going back to throw his last rock. He's got to make a nice draw, or Simmons is going to have a chance at two. They're taking ice on the center line, Mark. Uh, it seems to be pretty good ice. And well, the, it do, he doesn't have to make this perfect. All he has to do is get a sliver behind that corner guard, and he doesn't have to be frozen. It's just got to be shot rock. And he'll make it tough for two. Mark, they the haven't. On that uh, line, the line looks pretty good coming down halfway. But uh, uh, Bruce is working. I was going to have to curl fear a bit. I think they are going to have to work it to make it curl, Mark. He's going to be. It's coming hard there now. It finishes so hard down here, but again, he had great weight. Did have great weight, just didn't get the finish, didn't get the curl, and now yeah. after that great shot by Andrew Simmons, he's going to go back to the hack and have an open hit for two to start this game. You always in this at this level when you got the hammer, you want to get a deuce. And well, uh, Andrew's he, they won, they won, up. they won the hammer based on a draw to the pin. So this is the start that they were looking for. And you know, when you're as a skip, when you make your first two rocks in the first end, one you know a nice roll. And if you can make the hit for two here, it, it gives you a fair bit of confidence confidence going forward. Colin was indicating maybe that it's a little soft, but I think he's okay. His he's line kinda... looks pretty good from here. And two points to start the game for Team Simmons. So after the first end of play here in this 2024 Newfoundland Tankard, it is Team Simmons 2, Team Ryan McNeil Lambswood 0. Uh, while we wait for the guys to start the second end, there are some other games in play, and we'll, we'll try to update you, Mark. Uh, we'll try to update the, the watchers as we uh, go through this uh, fourth draw. But on sheet four, Harold Walters, who's at 1 and 2, uh, is playing Parker Tipple, who's at 0 and 2. On sheet five, uh, Nathan Young, who was at two and zero, oh, is playing Dave Thomas out of the Gateway Club in Port of Basque, and he sits at zero oh and two. And on sheet six, Dylan Hancock, uh, still looking for his first win at zero and three, is taking on Greg Smith, uh, who is sitting right now in the standings at two and one. And that, folks, is what we call your cross-country checkup. <laughs> So Alex is going to come out here. I think the call was, is he calling a three or a top four? What did Simmons uh, I think or, he, he played it in. He's playing it in. I, I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at uh, some of the line scores. So play it in, and then you're probably going to see Lambswood play a corner guard. Simmons is going to come back to the middle with a tight guard or in. And then uh, Lambswood would have a decision on what they want to do. So he has come in there to the top eight right on the center line. Nice shot by Alex Smith. Alex is, a, for a living, he's a professional engineer, and he works with the government of Newfoundland. He's an ADM with Industry, Energy, and Technology. Uh, another guy who works with the government like yourself, who retired from the government of Newfoundland a few years ago. Absolutely. And who is a professional retiree, by the way. I'm retired at being retired. <laughs> I think uh, in layman's terms, they call it sporty, uh, living the dream. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, Aaron Feltham now, uh, there's the, Ryan McNeil Lambswood is going to go right to work and try to generate some offense, and he's asked Aaron to throw a corner guard. Nice shot by Aaron Feltham as this rock uh, comes to rest and uh, going to try to generate the deuce, Mark. Well, Andrew, this is how we played it out after Alex's first rock. This was how this was going to play out. So Alex is going to play this tighter in, and then um, Team Lambs would have, would have to decide how they want to. Do they want to come around and corner freeze the rock in the eighth foot? 
do they want to come around the corner guard or do they want to throw another corner guard so and this is going to be pretty close to what they called coming coming hard now and that's a good that's exactly where Andrew tapped the broom, where he wanted it. Nice shot there by uh, Alex. Uh, Mark, you mentioned Alex was at the 1989 Briar. That was with Lauren Henderson, Peter Hollett, and Mark Brophy. And, you know, maybe it's a, a harbinger of what, what's to come. It wasn't in Regina, but it was in Saskatoon. And in that Briar, Alex and team went 7-4. and four. At that point, only three teams made the playoffs. The three teams are 8-3. and three. A pretty good trio, Pat Ryan, Ross Howard, and Rick Folk. Yeah, that's a pretty good trio. Pat Ryan would go on to win that prior in uh, in 1989, the infamous Ryan Express. But now you got to remember back then, that's so long ago, Steve, that it was pre-free guard zone of any kind, let alone the five rock rule. So that was playing the old rules that we grew up on. So it was a long time ago. Mark, I'm, I'm not sure, and I may be mistaken, but I don't know if that was the final that year where Pat Ryan got two in the first and then just peeled for nine ins. And at one point, the fans started chanting, I think boring, I think it boring. was. It was very boring. And that's when, I guess, the, the can Curling Canada realized that something had to change. And as you uh, indicated, uh, the free guard zone rule would come in shortly thereafter, I believe. I don't know what exact I, year it came in. The first, the first year in the Briar playdowns for the um, free guard zone, and at the time it was only the three rock rule, the first year was 94 in the Briar. So all the provincial playoffs across the country would have played, would have utilized the three rock rule that year because it was the Curling Canada standard. But a lot of teams, the a lot of the a lot of the tournaments on tour, a lot of the various spiels the top teams played in, started utilizing some format of a free guard zone in 1990, 89, 90 is around when it started, and so a lot of the teams that traveled had multiple games in before the playdowns even started in '94, and were quite familiar with using the free guard zone. Wasn't one of the first adopters to Moncton 500? Was that the, the spiel it was called or something? Did, uh, was I'm, that, I, in a, I'm not sure of the name of this tournament, okay. but it wasn't Moncton, and they could refer to it as the Ross Howard How rule at the time because he he was the one who came up with the rules for that particular tournament, and they utilized some format. I'm not sure if it was a straight three-rock rule, but some format where you couldn't hit rocks that were in certain positions, and all the teams liked it. Uh, because it never took anything away from the game. It just added to it, and he had more rocks in play, more angles to figure out, and it, it wasn't as boring for fans to watch. But anyway. Just one well, other quick thing on that, Mark. In 94, when that came in, uh, I believe you won that tankard with Franco Driscoll, Rob Thomas, and Gene Trickett, uh, the first year that was used in well, the playoffs. Again, as lewd as what I just said, we had a fair number of games in using that rule because we played on tour a fair bit. And, you know, we're pretty familiar and pretty uh, comfortable, is the word, I guess, with rocks in play. But anyway, we got rocks in play here, back in this sheet here right now. And uh, Lambswood is asking Weagle, Green Weagle, to make a run back. Blue on the yellow on the blue, I believe. Okay, not quite. Just missed it. Left, left the guard out front, opened up the, the shot rock, but now I, I think you're going to see Simmons come back in. He might even just throw a guard, but if he throws a guard, there's still an opportunity then for Lambsworth to come around the intern and get around everything. So I think Simmons has to play on this side because the shot rock is open. But Lambsworth is going to have some opportunities here to get in and around it, if, if he so... If, he, if they go that way, he might just play the run back on the guard again, obviously. Agreed. I, I don't think a guard here, if he comes up short, I don't think it's the end of the world. But how does it all unfold? Andrew's been throwing guards his last couple of rocks. Uh, Ryan McNeil Lambswood I was calling a freeze, I think, down on that blue that Alex had put in the house. It came up a little light, and then Andrew went into guard mode. Um, but anyways, he, like you said, he is coming down this open sheet of the ice and going to try to tuck one in there, I think.
I think it's going to be a guard, Mark, and I thought I heard them call a three. I thought I heard Steve Trickett call that uh, it yeah, would I be about a three. A guard. That yeah. rock door is fine. It is. So I, th I think you'll, yeah, it you looks like you're going to see Lambton play the run back. If he hits it thin, he can come off the yellow, and he still may come back and get the one in the rings. So yeah. we got a couple of options here. I think he's trying to hit it thin. I think he is, Mark, and I think you're right. If he can hit it uh, properly, he can get some spin action off that yellow and send that blue directly back in the house. Now you can just play a straight run back double off, so you haven't got to complicate it complicated here. you got to hit about a quarter rock, I believe, to make this. It's going to be close. He did hit the second rock, but only, only thin and just moved a, a few inches. But he did get the peel, which is what they were looking for. He actually didn't chunk enough of that yellow, so I think he needed to hit it uh, on the outer part of the, the blue a little little more to get more action off the yellow. So Simmons is going to go up there, I think, Mark, and put a guard, uh, put another three guard there, I believe. Well, oh. he, he does, it doesn't have, if he puts a three guard, there's going to be a run back. If he puts it a bit further out, I think then you're going to have Lambs would think about coming around because that rock in the eight foot is high enough in the rings that there's there's room there with the finish to get around that into the four foot area. So this is uh, Colin Thomas, the third for Andrew Simmons, and he's uh, put in the guard up there to try and cover that rock that's uh, right on the center line in the eight foot. <laughs> You seem to like this, Mark. Steve Trinkett's just uh, giving it a light dust. It's a little more. Hard, but now, Lambsford has a decision. He can try to slash that ar across that yellow one and bring that into play. But if you hit it wrong, he could slash blue on the yellow and roll it in the rings also. I think now it's a good opportunity for Daniel Bruce to come on the intern through the hole into the four foot behind that yellow guard and they can be shot rock it's a key key point you mentioned on him on that rock mark it's not in the four foot so there is room to there get is. in the four foot but i think they've opted to play the the double peel that you referred to earlier well there comes a point that you can peel and even if you make it the other team just puts it back so you're no farther ahead and you got one rock less to, to try to get points on the board All right So you're going to see Andrew put just put this guard back, and uh, Team Lambswood is no further ahead. And they're down to Skip's rocks now. It's going to have to be a Skip's deuce if so, they try to get a deuce, Mark. So it's going to be a, a tough two for Ryan well, McNeil. Andrew knows if he puts this guard out, Lambswood is probably in all likelihood going to draw. I would think that's what he's feeling. And, you know, if he puts a tight guard, even if Lambswood plays the run back and splits them out, there's still three guards up front for Andrew to come around, which forces Lambswood to one. So if you're going to be forced to one, why don't you just try to get two? Which means if Andrew puts the guard, Lambswood on his first rack, I think the best way to come around is on the intern around that long guard into the forefoot. There's a, lot of, there's a fair bit of curl there, and he can completely sink that on the pin. Andrew got no way to get it out. All he can do is make 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 Lambswood's last rock a, a tough draw for two. So again, it depends where he places this. Alex is tapping the broom like almost a not a three, but almost a two. We can even call it two and a half is where they'd like to put it, yeah, right got, on the center line. But they're going to have to work it hard. It's got a little bit of curling to do yet, and it's got to go. There might be a, I think there's a hole there to get through, right through the hole here. Yeah, yeah I think there absolutely is a hole, Mark. They're looking at that now, and if he can make this, there's a lot of rocks there to hide behind, yeah, and the deuce may be back in play if he I'm can make this. I'm looking at the monitor here, uh, Steve, and that hole is, geez, you can drive about five, that's about five trucks width wide. <laughs> <laughs> you can come to that hole sideways and still yeah. make it. 
All I can think of when you said that, I was a diehard Red Sox fan, and in, if you remember in 86, Bill Buckner booted that ball going on the first baseline and uh, went right through his legs, and there was a rumor going around Boston that he got ran over by a truck, but it was false because it, it drove through his legs. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, Bill Buckner was remembered for that, but he had a great career. Mm. Uh, that was just uh, one of those things that will go down in history. Uh, I'll always re be remembered in the anyways. In the big shot world. here, big shot here now, Steve for um, for Ryan Lambswood. He can get through this hole, and he has he can roll left or right. And if he can get a little roll behind one of these guards, especially the guard that Andrew Simmons just threw, he's going to bring two back into play. But uh, mission one is to get through the hole. And they're working it a bit for the curl now. Aaron right. Feltham is I on it he, to try and get it through the hole, Mark. I think he's through the hole. Okay, he nodded that. Good shot. The only thing is Andrew Simmons, he, he did clear. roll it a tiny bit. So Andrew's taking a look at it. He can probably get through and get a piece of it. His concern, I think, is holding the shooter now. I don't well, know. I if think he, if... Uh, Landwood was pretty tight to the rock that Andrew Simmons just threw. So if Andrew gets through, he got a bit more leeway on the center line side, and he might be able to roll behind that long guard a bit. And if it does curl a bit, he might roll right over behind the yellow corner guard. But the, the key here is to get through. And you got to remember, even if he gets through and plugs it on the nose here, it's a tough blank. So it, it, it might end up still being a force, which Andrew would be fine with. He'll be up one with the hammer, playing three. So the key is to get through the hole first. And what did we talk about last night, Mark? Uh, scoreboard management. You start thinking about, uh, particularly when you get in the second half of the game, well, managing second, the score. But uh, you always want a force when, when you a, don't have hammer. That scoreboard thing is a bit more of a second half thing in a 10 end game. But again, a force to get the hammer back and to be up is, uh, you're talking about control. They're working on it. It must be close. He got through the hole right on those roll just a shade to the right. So it is open, but it's going to be a really tough blank, just it's what you said, a, Mark. It's a tough blank. He may have to opt to just – that rock is in the pretty much full 12. He may have to opt to, to draw and just get a piece of the eight and take his one. Well, he just played it, so if you're going to take one – you know, there's two rocks in a row down this track, so it, you know you can play the hit and take one. That hole is not is not as tight as you feel, he's, but he's going to draw. The right mark, he is going to play. But that play that the draw. that's 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 just some, probably the sign of a bit of experience. He feels the hole a little bit off on release at all. You don't get through, and play the draw. You only got to hit eight foot and take your one. These guys are a young team, but they they come in into this with a fair bit of experience. And you know they were national runner-up in 2020, lost the national junior final. They've been close in the super our, our local super league on a couple of occasions. I mean they're a good quality young hurling team. They all throw the rock really well. They practice a ton. And you know they're just good young fellas. And uh, the line here is pretty good. It is, Mark. I think the weight looks pretty good. It is curling a lot. They're going to have to keep going. Are they gonna, they're probably going to have to go hard to get by that top blue now, Mark, are they? No, he's good. He's good? Yeah. That's eh, a good curling shot. Again, that's, that's. if you're asking me, I think that was a experience on Ryan's part to play the draw there. But again, these guys aren't newbies. They are not, and so uh, they'll pick up one here in the second end. It's fourth draw of the 2024 Men's Newfoundland Tankard. And in our feature game, uh, Andrew Simmons leads 2-1. to one. And while they're shifting to the third end, we're going to stay online here and keep going and give you some updates on the scores across the sheets. Uh, on sheet four, uh, Harold Walters leads Parker Tipple 3 to nothing after scoring a 3 in the first end. On sheet five... Uh, Dave Thomas scored one on Nathan Young and leads one to nothing after the first end of play. And on sheet six, Dylan Hancock picked up one in the first end 
and, and he's up one nothing on Greg Smith. So now, Mark, uh, we're going to start the third end. Aaron Feltham is the lead for uh, Ryan McNeil Lambswood. I was downstairs just before I came up for the broadcast, and Rod and Michelle Feltham uh, came in the door, so they're here to watch their son play in this tanker. Uh, Rod, of course, has been around the curling scene for a long time, and Ryan's asked him to put up a center guard, and they're going to try and generate some offense here and go for the steal in the third end, or the force. Well... At the end of the day, he'd be just as happy to force Andrew Simmons to one and get the hammer back. So, you know, you don't want to, you don't need to go uh, all in here if you're Ryan Lambswood. You just got to uh, see if you can force a miss or create an opportunity for yourself. And uh, what you said earlier, I'm not surprised uh, Rod and his wife are in town. They usually come in quite a bit to watch, to watch Aaron play. They do, and if you'll recall, uh, Rod has won three Everest Ash, or three Everest Provincials, 2014, 2019, and 2022. And in 2022, the club was held at the West Edmonton Mall where Rod played, and Aaron played on that team. So what a thrill for Rod to play in a national championship with his son, and I heard the atmosphere at the West Edmonton Mall was absolutely electric. And, uh, so pretty cool thing, and Alex Smith, of course, the Wiley veteran, after Aaron Felton put up that perfect guard, Alex comes in and puts it right on the top of the lid, and we're going to have some action in this end. Well, they put the guard up, and uh, Alex Smith drew around to the pin, and now Aaron Felton has to respond. It's pretty good, Mark. You're going to have to make it curl, though, I think. My, oh, a half a pound, not even a pound oh. too much weight. A half a pound too much weight. So, One of my pet peeves in curling is when that happens. I've and gotten the, a look and, from and you once just or slip twice off before. it enough to give the other guy a chance to get in off it again. Yeah, they're playing to freeze now, Mark, and he's going to try to put it right on top of those two, uh, Alex is. What do you got? Uh, Colin Thomas and Stephen Trickett are working on this one here now. Weight looks, weight looks pretty close. Those guys can bring it a long way. They can drag it. And they got Andrew out helping them out. Trying to get it. Well, it's into the forefoot. That's, that's a good shot. Wow, great sweeping by the yeah. front end there. Steve Trickett and Colin Thomas, they dragged that rock a long way, Mark. Well, Alex knew, again, talking about experience, Alex knew his first rock was only swept about half a sheet. So he knew he couldn't, he couldn't bump it. So he takes a little weight off. Gives it to his sweepers. They pound it the whole way, and you make a nice shot. So, you know, again, we've already mentioned it a couple of times. You have eight experienced players out there, so you should see a lot of nice shots. Only and again, you got the sweepers communicating. All the sweepers are in shape out there. They can all drag a rock a long way, and they can all judge the weight well. And now Graham Weagle is trying to come on top of all those rocks uh, and we're going to have a mess if he makes this That's shot. the way this is shaping up to be a mess. Absolutely. But again, he just bounced off that ever so slightly. If Simmons can ever get in off that, they're in business, as we say. Well, Alex but again, this is, this is a weight shot. This is like back, back ring weight. And it's just, this was all made on the sweepers, on the line call. And he got sweepers around off the whole way down the sheet to get the right line. Because these guys can curve it. And on the other side of that coin, they can hold the line. The sweepers are so strong. But this is a big shot for Stephen Trickett. It is. He really wants to make this shot. Uh, if he can, like you said, you said, get that little flip inside. Ryan McNeil Lance is going to have a lot of problems. Starting to curl hard here. Starting to curl hard. Are they going to be able to hold it, Mark? Oh, they did. Great Got shot. Of guard. Now, you know the key to that shot, but we can't tell him after the game. Alex held the line. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> he probably feels like throwing up out there now yeah. after having to sweep that the whole way hard. So, three great shots, but a... By the front end there, are Alex Smith, uh, two two beauties, and Steve Trickett. Yeah. Great guys, experienced curlers. The only thing I question is their choice of football teams. Good. Because 
Brinkett's a Browns fan, and uh, Alex roots for the Finns, the Miami Dolphins. So uh, mm -hmm. other than that, I think they're pretty good guys. Well, I don't root for Cleveland or Miami, so I'm agreeing with you. But they need a run back here from Graham Weagle. Is he going to make it, Mark? Okay, he got one out. But he still left two racks sort of in the, on the center line area. He, he didn't get it fully out of the rings, though, Mark. That's still hanging around in the back of the 12-foot. I don't know if it will come into play. I mean, Simmons does have... It looks, like, it looks like his third shot here. So... Is that stagger lined up, you know, if you smash that blue, do all three go? Uh, it might be close. Pretty close, is in, the, is in the right vicinity. But again, you might not get an opportunity for that. It, it all depends where Simmons puts this rock. He's looking at that stagger now. I think his option here, he, I think he has to guard it. Now, he, he does have the hammer, and normally you would think he gets some separation. But if that's a triple, if that's lined up for a triple, I don't think he can not guard it. I think he has to play the guard to keep that big end alive. Yeah, Mark, it's kind of contrary to what we typically do. When you, when you have the hammer, you're not usually throwing center guards, but in this situation, I think it's the right call. He got lots of line here, Stephen Trickett does. But Steven's a really good player, good head on the shoulders, and a quality thrower. So this should be pretty close. And he's got a nice shot here. Yeah, you mentioned all the, the junior championships. Steve did have two junior championships in 2012. Played second for Colin Thomas with Spencer Wicks and Brendan Murphy. And in 2014, he skipped his own team and won the Newfoundland Championship, playing with uh, Adam Boland, Evan Kearley, and Zach Young. So he's got a few jackets in his closet and would love to add a briar jacket to that collection. Absolutely, absolutely. What have we got here? It's going to be close. No, just got the one. That's more bad luck than anything to put it through that hole and only get one. So this is a scary situation unfolding for Lammy. There's two corner guards out there uh, that, you know, when Andrew Simmons has the hammer, he's playing the guard. He's lying three. Uh, this is getting a bit uncomfortable. And the way, those, the way those rocks are, where they are in the top of the forefoot and the angle, very hard for Lamford to get around and be shot rock. And, and like, he, he, I don't think he'd be buried unless he was right at the back of the forefoot. And, you know, such a tough shot. But now this rock is, he's playing the guard here, but it looks like maybe Colin was put it out of it. He's well wide here. That's really got to curl a lot, Mark. I don't think it's going to curl enough. Yeah, that's that's going to be wide open. That's not, a, that's, a, not a, that's not what they were looking for there. That's not really close. This could be an end changer right here. Uh, Big shot coming up here for Dan Bruce. Absolutely. He, he can definitely get two, and he might be lucky and depending on how they're lined up. Well, even if they one. jam the back one, if they get two out of the forefoot, it changes the whole end. Because you can make that double there. I don't know if you're holding the shooter if you make the double, but the... Aaron Feltham is really trying to hold the line on this, Mark. He's really working it hard. Uh, they, jammed, they made the double, jammed the back one, but he rolled for shot rock. So uh, not a bad result, if you're asking me. But the thing here, he got two rocks out of the forefoot. And now we, Andrew's probably going to try to play a hit and roll behind the corner guard. So he did get him, Daniel did get him off the forefoot. They're not out of the woodwork here yet by any stretch. But the situation is a lot better than it what it was better. one rock ago. Uh, unfortunately, that blue rock, although it's in the back 12, it's right behind the corner guard. So there's still a possibility for Andrew Simmons to score multiple if he can make this shot. Mark, uh, he's got Alex Smith really working this. Oh, 
American. Unfortunately, uh, Colin has flashed that rock. Fortunately, he hit his back one. And he might have hit his back one and stayed in for a shot now. Really close. But that's that was a, a tough miss by Colin. That's a bit of a break there. At this level, Mark, you don't see too many flashed hits. Uh, Not too many. They usually always come back to bite you. So, as I used to tell the teams I used to coach, the junior teams, nothing good comes out of a flash when you, fl when you miss a hit. Nothing good. So, Mark, I didn't quite see the call, but I, I think they're going to try and draw behind that blue guard that's up there covering half of the forefoot. I believe that is the call. Well, that tells me that they're, they're shot rock. I think if Blue was shot at the back, they'd play the intern around the corner guard down to it. Maybe the light two would be a possibility. But if we're trying to play this out turn draw, I'm thinking that the uh, Lambswood team is lying two, or lying one right now, sorry. So all of a sudden, Mark, this end has shifted in a hurry. Uh, Andrew Simmons was lying three, and now... Uh, if, in fact, that yellow is shot rock, Lammy is Lambs to lie, too. Lambs, they need this rock in, though. And he's short. Opportunity missed there for Lambswood to put some pressure. So Simmons has the same shot again to lie, too. Yeah, Colin Thomas opened the door for uh, Ryan, and unfortunately he couldn't take advantage of the opportunity, and he's given the, that opportunity right back to Andrew Simmons. Well, I always told my junior teams I used to coach, if you're going to make any shot, you got to make a shot after the other team misses a rock because those opportunities don't come very often, and that's how you take advantage and try to put a couple of points on the board. Now, Mark, if Andrew Simmons comes down and he makes this hit and just flops in underneath, the three is in play. Again. Lambswood is probably going to have to run his guard back and try to, make, uh, try to limit the damage. So this is another big shot. In this curling game. They haven't laid a broom on us. They're working it hard to try and make it curl, Mark. I don't know if it's going to curl enough. Oh. And he jams wow. it and rolls out. Now Lambswood, I think, is lying two. Wow, that's three real, that's three missed shots in a row, Mark. Just giving it back and forth. It can't, uh, I can't, uh, can't say much about that. That's just miscues back and forth there. Lambs would, I think he's drawn to lie three now. He is. It looks like it's they're lying two on our on our monitor here. I don't know if we can get the tech support to do a overhead for us, or we can try it here. Hopefully, it's not us doing the tech support, or things could go wrong in a hurry. Anyhow, uh, Ryan McNeil Lambswood now is going to. Draw, we got a shot at there, the there we go. overhead, Mark. It's really pretty close. Pretty close. So this is either a draw to lie two, possibly three, and Andrew Simmons is going to face a lot of pressure when he gets in the hack control class rock if Ryan oh. McNeil Lambs would make this shot. It's a big shot here for Ryan. Now if he can lie three, if he can get this around that guard, he seems to have loads of line here on this one, but there is finish. His weight looks a bit better. If they get, get this partly around, still got a lot of room. No, I, I think that uh, Sims, I think they let him off the hook. I think he's going to have a straight hit for one. So they took it. They never really took advantage of the opportunity they had. They were given here. They didn't. If uh, Lammy could have tucked that in behind the guard, and Andrew would you don't have been to, real tough. You don't have to make a perfect. If you're half around, half in, yeah, absolutely. It makes it so much tougher on Andrew. He's probably going to have to draw. And after his last rock, now he's thinking all I got to do is make the nose hit. So it's a it's a lot better position than he thought he would have been in. So that shot is on the way, Mark, uh, and they they're, they're calling for the curl right now to sweep for the curl, but I think he is going to be pretty good. I don't know if he's going to. He's going to roll. He might roll too far. 
Oh no, wow. That really popped off that rocket. Now, the question is, Mark, is it a steal of one it's, or a steal of two? It looks to me like it could be a steal of two. I always say, Mark, if there's absolutely any doubt, throw a stick on it. And yep. I don't think any... Oh, no. If they never threw a stick on it, I'm thinking it's two. I would agree with you. We'll wait for the uh, official ruling, but... And it is two, Mark. It's a two, a big steal of two for Roy McNeil Lambswood. And early in that end, he was facing three. So after three ends of play, in this fourth draw of the 2024 men's Newfoundland Tankard, it is... Ryan McNeil Lambswood three, Andrew Simmons two. Simmons will have the hammer in the fourth end. And uh, while we're Oops. on here, Mark, let's go across the sheet. On sheet four, uh, we have uh, Harold Walters is up three to one on Parker Tipple. Three to two, excuse me, on Parker Tipple. On sheet five. Yeah, playing the Yellow Rock, Nathan Young has scored a four-ender, and he's up four to one on Dave Thomas. And on sheet six, uh, Dylan Hancock is up one nothing on Greg Smith. Oh, six one, yeah. Dylan Hancock was in the way of the scoreboard there, so big six-ender by Greg in the second end, and he's out to a big lead, six one over Dylan Hancock after two ends of play. So, Mark, we're in the fourth end here. Uh, big steal by Ryan McNeil. Lambswood, what do you think of that end? There was a bit of back and forth, a few shots missed, and Ryan came out with the deuce after. Well, halfway to the end, it looked like it was going to be a three or four under for Simmons. And then they got an advantage, Lambswood team. They gave it back to Simmons. Simmons gave it back to Lambswood, who gave Simmons a, a shot to get out of it. And he must have hung in a little wide. A little too much weight and end up in a, resulting in a steal of two. Anyway, uh, that first rock of Aaron Feltham, uh, he's put it in the top 12. And, of course, not uh, surprisingly, Andrew Simmons is called a corner guard. He's going to try and generate some offense here in this fourth end. So Mark is to call here. I didn't see the call. Is he calling a three, or is he just going to tap that back to the four foot? I think uh, either one is fine. I'm not sure what the shot was, but it's either a tight guard or a tap it back. Try to keep Andrew away from the corner guard. But uh, I think with the weight he came out of the hack, I think the call is probably the tap. It looks like he's going to it's going to be a tap with the line he got here now. Right, Pretty he's close on the line, right? It's got to curl a little bit. It's going to have to curl a bit more. Split him a little bit. Yeah, he's going to split him. That's yeah, okay. He moved that first rock over so that it's biting the center line, and now uh, Andrew's going to look at a double, try to clean things up here. He's still got the corner guard out there that could be used later in the end. So ask for Alex to, to make the double takeout. Mark, I think uh, they're, they're working this. I don't think he's going to get the double. I think this might overcurl a little. Well, that's fine there. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that shot. Oh, no, he's rolled over and it's fairly frozen to that rock. So, so if, if Lambs wants to get rid of it, he's probably going to lose one of his own. He may even lose his shooter, which what happens then, it puts Simmons coming around the corner guard, his own corner guard, So, which is what he would have wanted. So that's probably, in my mind, better than making a double. So oh, in the hack now is Graham Weagle. He's the second for uh, Ryan McNeil Lambswood. I mentioned Graham uh, is from Chester, Nova Scotia. He's a finance and marketing graduate from uh, St. Mary's University. Yeah, I, I, I do believe he won the uh, skipped national under-18 team a few years ago. 
out of Nova Scotia. And Marky just doubled those two rocks off and uh, basically hit it on the nose, left his rock in the top 12. And Simmons is going to go after that. Now he's going to ask uh, Steve Trickett to uh, remove that from play. You don't seem too concerned about that, Mark. Just no, this kind rock... of a light dust. I think he's probably going to get a nose hit out of yeah, this. Yeah, it looks to... They weren't. They were just sweeping to try to get it to come up a little tiny bit, but they weren't too worried about it. Well, I noticed nice five. Uh, Nathan Young just stole a big four ender, and Dave Thomas. Yeah, as an update, uh, Mark and Cheat Father, it is eight to one now for Nathan Young after three ends. He did get four and then stole four, so he's blown that game wide open. So Graham Weagle here is trying to hit and stay or maybe get a roll over towards that center line or a slight roll. Okay. Mark, you mentioned earlier as the end is pretty clean here. Uh, this Ryan McNeil Lambswood team, they've got a lot of experience. You mentioned that loss in the 2020 Canadian Junior Final, and we talked about it last night if you weren't listening to the broadcast. As legend has it, they got out just before the big storm here, Snowmageddon. Uh, and made it to that Canadian Junior, which was in Langley, B.C. They lost the final to Jack Goche. Uh, Ryan and Dan, I think Dan was skipping at the time. Ryan was playing third. And on that team, the lead was Nathan Young. And the second, I want to say hi to him out there in Nova Scotia, our buddy, Joel Kratz. Kratzy. Krat well, actually, Kratzy's playing with... Um James Gratton in New Brunswick. Oh, he's... Uh, and they just got back from the big spiel down in uh, Arizona. The Ed okay. Wernick Classic. If you recall, I think it was the Tankard here a couple of years ago in our last game at a round robin. We were playing Guju, I believe, or it was deep into the round robin. And uh, we had Kratzy play second for us, and he made everything. He stood on his head. Well, I think it's one of the best names in curling. Kratzy. Kratzy. But anyway. I yelled that out just to, uh, you know, it was the sixth end. I think he was hammering a rock, and I yelled, hard Kratzy. <laughs> and I even got kind of the applause from uh, Jeff Walker or Brett Glant. They liked uh, that yeah. nickname, and it, it has stuck. So. It is stuck, yeah. Kratzy, if you're listening, uh, hope you're having a good one, buddy. All right, so, Mark, uh, this end is fairly wide open. Fairly wide open. Andrew does have a chance now to utilize that corner guard. He's asked uh, Colin Thomas to try and tuck one in there. So... That could open up the option of a potential deuce if Colin can make this shot. And I'm just noticing now also, uh, Steve, on a six, uh, Greg Smith got the six in the second end, but I think he has Hancock drawing through a hole against five. Yikes. That's, uh, that's a shot that hopefully Dylan and so this can game, this, game this game could, could get out of over. control in a hurry also. So, Mark, a nice draw in behind the corner by uh, Colin Thomas. And now he's giving uh, Lammy something to think about. Well, this is where um, Ryan Lamb did not want to play. They've been trying to avoid getting over there all in. But, again, in Andrew's, in, uh, Andrew's uh, train of thought, they put the corner up and they worked all in to get over there. So they finally got over there. They got a good rock around. The only thing the rock is just on the back half of the uh, center line, so there's uh, enough curl and enough uh, room for Daniel Bruce to get around that guard and get it out. Aaron Feltham is working working it hard here. Are they going to get it by the guard, Mark? And they're by the guard. It looks like a great, a nice shot by Daniel Bruce. Well swept. Yeah, that was a nice shot for... Uh... Danny Bruce. Dan is still reeling over last weekend. Massive Buffalo Bills fan. And it's a good thing he wasn't wide right on that delivery. Good uh, thing. Unfortunately, Tyler Bass, the kicker for Buffalo, uh, the, the worst two words in wide, Buffalo. Wide right. Wide right. <laughs> and if you're not familiar with that, back in 1991, the kicker for the Buffalo Bills, Scott Norwood, in the Super Bowl, had a kick to win the Super Bowl. And wide, Al Michaels' famous right. call on the 47-yard field goal, wide right. 
the Giants would go on to win that Super Bowl. That was the first of four Super Bowls the Bills were in, and they lost every one of them. And unfortunately, Wide Right reared its ugly head again once, last week. Once again. Yeah. You don't realize two, how two words can be so bad. I mean, that's even worse than the four four word thing. Check is in the mail, or five words. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, nice shot there uh, by uh, Colin Thomas. Came behind, came around the guard, and, and hit that rock. And are they going to try and chase that again with a similar? Well, short, they they got a bit of a roll inside, so I. It it may, I don't think they can throw any weight at it now. So this is always a little scary. That was a, that was a, that was a, that was a really good throw by Colin Thomas to get inside of that. And I'm just looking over now. Greg Smith stole another four on uh, Dylan Hancock. So that's 10 points and two ends. So that game is pretty much out of control there now at 10-1. Yeah, it's 10-1 Greg Smith and, as we mentioned, 8-1 Ethan Young is up on ice five, so a couple of big leads there. But in Dylan Hancock, they're a junior team, and you know they gave up a big end against one of the favorites. So they went all in, as they should, and just never worked out for them. So take it as a learning experience, carry on, and uh, you know pick it up next game. So Mark, it's always a little scary when you're. And you don't have hammer, and you're drawing in behind corner guards. Ryan McNeil Lambsworth needs to make a really good shot here. Uh, he's uh, short. Yeah. Now, Simmons can split the rings here, but I like coming around the corner again to bring three into play. I love coming around the corner, Mark. There's, that's a, the, the, there's enough curl there that you can get a nice finish, and that's what he. That's what Alex is indicating. But he also tapped the wide. I think. I think he got an opportunity. Just talked last end about when your when your opponent makes a, a mistake, try and take advantage of it. And this is an opportunity to get three points, but they're opting for the safer play mark. They're gonna take their deuce and draw to the open side. No, they're gonna they're gonna split the rings here and be happy with your two if you can get it. I think I'd be playing to draw him behind, Mark. I'd really be going for the three. You don't get a lot of opportunities to score three at this level. Well, and there's I, a, there's a, a the finish is really good there. And, you know, you don't need to make it perfect to have a good result. You just gave up a steal of two. I, I realize you're going to go up four to three if you get the deuce here. But a chance to get a three-ender, I am thinking long and hard about that if I'm Andrew Sanders. Nonetheless, they started the end with the sole focus of trying to get a deuce. Yeah, I know. So that to follow through on what your original plan was, but they're going to have to go hard on this. They are, Mark. They're going to have to go really hard. It's going to be close. Nope. He pulled the string. So that's two wins in a row now. There's been some miscues by Andrew Simmons here. Oh, it, it, After his, they started so strong. You don't see that out of Andrew Simmons very often, but that is a missed opportunity for Andrew. And now Ryan McNeil Lambswood, Lammy as we affectionately call him, may be able to get out of this end. Well, uh, I don't think he's going to miss by as much as he missed the first one. So if you're asking me, I think this is going to be pretty close to being made just so. I think he got to hear more ice. He'll give it a little more weight. He got good sweepers that can carve that. Once you get by the guard, you got about six feet to get the, to get a bit of a bend down, five feet. If you would say, Mark, if they're going to have to carve it, you want to see them carve it like Sunday dinner. Absolutely. Now he's a little inside out on his release here. He got a little. Ryan has that little bit of a pop, so he got lots of line here now, guys. And they're both trying to carve it a bit here. It's coming hard there now. Mark, it's looking pretty good, I think. They're by the guard. No, I think they got to stop. I think they overswept it a little bit. They could have they could have laid off. He got by the guard by three or four inches. They could have laid off the sweeping a little bit on that. I think that's partially open to Andrew. 
I don't think it's a... He's only got to move it a foot or two, Mark. So I think he could play like a back, back eight. I'm trying back. to get a trying to get a look on the monitor here now from the different camera angles. How much he might be able to see. What do you think? What do you think, Steve? I think he's probably got a portion of it. It's it's it is fairly buried, but he might have maybe he only got maybe a, a quarter of it. He can well, see, but well, you got to be fairly tight to the guard, But you only got to put that said. You only got to push the foot, maybe fifteen inches. And if you only got backline weight, if you hit a if you, if you hit if you hit a quarter a quarter rock, you're not going to roll out of the eight foot. So big right. sh big shot here for Simmons. This is going to be you talk about a team shot. Andrew needs to lay it out there. The no. sweeper's got to be communicated. It, it looks to me like he got a lot, it looks to me like he got a lot of weight. But here it comes. They're calling hard for the sweep and mark. Nice shot. And Andrew nice Simmons shot. redeems himself after that first rock, a great curling shot to score two and get that deuce right back. So after four ends of play in this 2024 men's Newfoundland tankard, the Provincial Curling Championships, our feature game, it is Team Andrew Simmons 4, Team Ryan mcneil lambs with 3. Well, that's a good shot. Uh, for, from Andrew's perspective, after a couple of miscues in the third end, to try to right the ship and put a couple of points on the board is a big deal. Get your confidence going again. And and now you're still you're up one. So I said that last night, Mark, that Ben Hogan once said in, about golf, your most important shot is your next one. And in golf, unfortunately, if you fly one out of bounds, you don't get to take that back on the hole. But in curling, if you miss that first shot, you got to reset, come back, and that's what Andrew Simmons did and, and made a big shot to score two for his team. So as we look across the ice while the guys are getting ready to start the fifth end, uh, it is uh, still 8-1 to one for Nathan Young over Dave Thomas, 10-1 to one for Greg Simmons over Dylan Hancock on ice 6. And on ice 4, it's a tie game uh, between Harold Walters and Parker Tipple. They're tied at 3 as they play the fourth end. So in our game, uh, as we start the fifth end, Alex Smith has put a center guard up there just off the center line, and Ryan McNeil Lanswood, I think, is uh, came off the center line a bit, Mark. So I think he's going to try to tuck one in there behind in the top four, top eight. Yeah, I think you're right there, Steve, and uh, I think Lanswood's going to try to put a couple of points on the board here, so he might try to get a little bit aggressive. He doesn't want to put himself in a situation where he's going to get caught having to make a tough shot against a couple of Simmons stones. Uh, he'd much rather, even if he's tied, going into the break in a tie game. But if he can put a couple on the board, he'd be happy with that also. I would like that a bit deeper, Mark. He did get it in the top 12. It's partially covered. Uh, but I think Simmons is going to throw like a board waiter down there and try and hit that and roll out to the wing. He's just throwing about board weight, Mark. I think Alex is going to have a pretty good rock here. A nice shot by Alex Smith, Mark. He hits, uh, hits that rock and rolls right out and just biting the 12 foot. So, real nice shot. Yep, very nice shot. You know, we mentioned Alex has got a few jackets. One of the ones that he has is uh, in 1985, he won the Newfoundland Junior Championship. Uh, and on that team, it was Keith Casey, Ken Ellis, and Ian Kerr. That Canadian Junior was played right here at the club. It was indeed. And the winner of that. Uh, championship was a guy who went on to have a pretty prolific career, Mr. Kevin Martin. And we all know about Kevin Martin, Kevin DeBeer. 
Merton, and uh, he's had a Hall of Fame career. So Aaron did remove that rock, but he rolled out. Uh, and now Andrew is going to utilize that center guard and try and tuck one in there. He's going to ask his second, Steve Trickett, to uh, put put a rock in the top four, top eight behind And, one, and one of my favorite people just came in the club and came over to join us, Emily Neary. Uh, 2023 All-Canadian Academic Athlete. All-star at U Sport Nationals and national current national under twenty one junior runner up. So all around all star player. Absolutely. So I'm gonna let her get her in here now, Steve, and we're gonna get her insights on some of the curling here. Well, I gotta say there's a there's a good crowd here in the club today. This is the first time I've been uh, here live from the club. Um, but it's good to be here with you guys. I've been listening into the commentating and it's it's been awesome so far. Got a good few uh, few good players out here today. Uh, got a few games on the go. But uh, yeah, it's looking real nice. You guys are doing a great job. Thanks, Emily. Appreciate it. Uh, while you're here in the booth, why don't you talk for a minute? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, you were out in Porta Basque. You played the mixed doubles with Dylan Hancock. You guys had a good run, lost the semifinal. Everyone I've talked to who was out in Porta Basque said it was an awesome event. Ice was great. The hospitality. Why don't you speak about that experience for oh, a minute? Oh, man. It was wonderful. That's the first official doubles uh, spiel that I've played. It was absolutely incredible. One of the, one of the best best spiels I've been to here in the province in a long time. Um, like you said, the hospitality was amazing. We stayed with um, a host family. Um, so we stayed with actually the mayor. Um, shout out to the Buttons if they're watching. Um, but yeah, they were amazing. We were very well fed. Um, you know, it was just a great week. A lot of great curling. The ice was really good. Props to the to the ice crew out there as well. Um, yeah, overall it was it was very, very well organized. And so big thanks to everybody who put that together. It was an amazing week, yep. That's great to hear. And I actually was talking to Brian Button yesterday in the curling club. He was here. Uh, I was talking to Brian Button and, and uh, Dylan Hancock's grandparents. Oh, there you go. And, uh, you know, told them every curler that I spoke to said it was just a fantastic week out there. They had a great time. So thanks to everyone at the Gateway Curling Club and in Porta Basque for uh, such a fantastic event. Heard the ice was super too. It was amazing. Yeah, we were getting 15, sometimes even 15 and a half to tee. Um, curl was was pretty good out there. I was I was really really impressed. I gotta say, it's very very nice. So Emily, the ladies, uh, Scotty started today, uh, and we're full of we're halfway through the, the almost halfway through the round robin here and. This 2024 tankard. Any predictions from yourself, or what are you seeing? I hate to put you on the hot seat, but oh. any, any thoughts of what we might see here? Man, well, you know, a couple of my, actually, three of my teammates who are playing for the Memorial Seahawks this year, um, along with myself, are playing in the Scotties Playdowns uh, this this weekend. So I, I mean, I'm cheering them all on. I'm really hoping the girls pull it off. Um, but I, I think it's just going to be a great weekend of curling. We've got we've got four pretty strong women's teams, um, and uh, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how the weekend pans out. Yeah, we talked about that last night. You're absolutely right. There's four teams. I think any one of those teams could uh, could pull out the W. Absolutely. Uh, in this uh, in this year's Scotty, so it's going to be really interesting. And uh, as is this tankers, don't know who's going to be able to pull this out but all i know is if you're a curling fan and you want to see some cur good curling come down to the remax center the st john's curling club it's a high caliber of curling it's some of our best curlers in the province the atmosphere is electric if you're in the building here so uh if you enjoy watching competitive curling this is the spot to be for the next couple of days absolutely so we are moving through this fifth end Emily, and as we were speaking, there is a ton of rocks in play here. There's a couple uh, in the forefoot there, and Colin Thomas is bringing the heat, trying to raise his blues back on those two yellows that are in the forefoot. He wasn't able to get the execute the shot. He did peel the guard, so Lammy is definitely lying one. Maybe a second shot, but those rocks are in a troubling place for Andrew Simmons. Yep, for sure. So 
So they're looking at playing the hit on that top blue. Uh, the angles are pretty good on the back two yellows. I think they want to hit that top blue and maybe roll over to the wing or even roll over and cover a portion of those yellows. They don't want to clip anything on the way by. And they're not throwing big weight at this. He's got to hold it. It is the shooter going to stay there, Emily? Don't think so. Not losing the shooter on that one. Fortunately, there's no easy easy double there because that that yellow that's biting the button, that is jamming all day on that back blue. So they're going to take a look at this. What do you like here, Emily? They can, they can play the hit on that top yellow. The, the, the top yellow will go if they knows it, but that yellow is jamming on the blue. I mean, right now, I think he's definitely got to make a play on it somehow. Um, moving those rocks around, see if he can switch up the angles a little bit. Might give him a bit of a break there, but uh, you're right. That, uh, that back yellow always jams on the blue, so we'll see what they're thinking here now. Definitely playing the hit on the top yellow. Just a matter of where. And try and get a little flop to the side as well. Yeah, that's what Andrew's in indicated. He's going to hit this uh, not on the center line side, on the other side. Uh, that Again, that top yellow will definitely go. And actually by doing that, he may be able to uh, avoid hitting that back yellow back blue and he'll have two rocks in the house so I think that's what he's trying to accomplish to have two rocks in the house to uh, Lammy's one but this is curling pretty hard and yeah. they're working it hard Emily it's curling big time oh boy and, uh, unfortunately he lost the shooter and he lost his back blue, so right away you see Ryan McNeil, uh, McNeil Lambswood tap the outer 12 foot, and this is an opportunity now for Dan Bruce to draw to the tee line and lie three with no real easy double in play. Yeah, that's a pretty pretty unfortunate miss there from uh, Team Simmons, but uh, we'll see if they can bring it back. So Dan Bruce hails from Warnerbrook, Newfoundland, this team, Emily, uh, their team is from all over. Uh, Ryan McNeil Lambswood is out of Stephenville. Aaron Feltham's out of Gander. And Graham Weagle is from Chester, Nova Scotia. So uh, players from all over the province and outside the province on this team. i got to say I'm, uh, I'm pretty impressed with how they play considering they're all from different parts of the province and even outside the province. So uh, they... Uh, they don't, I, I would say they practice as often together as some of the other teams here, but they're still bringing a really high caliber of play, which is very exciting to see. Great point, Emily. It's, it's not easy, you know, building that team chemistry and getting used to each other's delivery and all, uh, all those sorts of things. I don't think Graham has been around a lot this year, probably came I in from Nova Scotia. So. Yeah. Works in Nova Scotia. So they haven't had a lot of time together as a full unit and, that's a great point. They've been able to overcome that and are really playing at a high level this week in this 2024 Newfoundland Tankers. So it's a pretty flat double there Emily, but is he is Andrew going to try to bring the heat and uh, pound that rock in the forefoot, maybe two thirds of rock and and roll over? Is that double there? It may be, but it's it's not going to be easy. I missed the call, but it wouldn't surprise me if he might play a plan B on this. Try and just roll in front of that yellow if he can't make the the straight double there. He hasn't thrown a ton of weight here, but they really got to keep it straight there. They were playing the double. And, and he makes it. 
What a great shot by Andrew Simmons. Uh, that is going to limit the damage. Uh, McNeil Lambswood still has a deuce in play for sure. And this is a bit of a veteran call too. The, the yellow is each yellow is shot rock. The blue is second shot rock. And instead of hitting it, he is talking about or initially looking at a freeze, but now I think he's just going to draw it out and put it on T-line, uh, split the house, and try and score an easy deuce. That's what I like to call, and I'm sure many others like to call the classic junior deuce. The junior deuce, yep, I love a, it. That's a that's a Rob Tom Thomasism absolutely. right there. Absolutely. Yeah. Does the job. The score the scoreboard doesn't paint any pictures, Emily. Well, a, a junior this might be a junior deuce, but uh, a, a senior deuce is when you have a hit for three and you you, you roll out and only get two. <laughs> Mark bringing in the comedy here. It's a great weekend with some great curling. Speaking of comedy, Dan Bruce tells me he's a big Seinfeld fan. So, uh, great show, by the way. That Absolutely. was a beauty. Absolutely. You watch, you watch any Seinfelds? I, I wa I've watched a few episodes. Oh. Can't say I've watched uh, all, the whole thing, that but was... uh, I, I've seen some pretty funny clips from that one. That was must-see TV with my favorite show, Cheers, on Thursday nights. A couple of great shows right there. So he came up a little light. He is lying two, but Andrew's not even thinking about trying to take on the double, I don't think. And he's concerned about the jam over there as well, so I think he's just going to go over and eliminate that second shot rock and have uh, Ryan try and play a hit to score his two. In this fifth end. I think this is a pretty safe call. Still relatively early in the game. We're, we're just over halfway through. So, I mean, being down one with in the sixth is not a bad position. We talked about this earlier, Emily. This is a big game. Both of these teams are 3-0. and uh, The winner of this goes to 4-0, and and we'll have beaten a 3-1 and team. And it's a big prize at the end of the week of the round robin. There's nine teams. Only three make the playoffs, and the top team goes right to the final with Hammer. So Man. this is a big game. Absolutely. Lots at stake here. And a nice shot by Andrew Simmons. He eliminates that uh, yellow counter, rolls into the eight-foot. Uh, mission accomplished for Stick to lie to or to, to score to and take a one-point lead after the fifth end of this game. The prize, Emily, for this is a trip to the 2024 Montana's Briar. We mentioned there's a new sponsor for the Briar this year. It there is no is. longer the Tim Hortons Briar after almost 20 years. It's going to be the Montana's Briar. Uh, and that will take place from March 1st to the 10th in Regina, Saskatchewan at the Brandt Center. And I'm sure the atmosphere there is going to be electric. So it looks pretty good, Emily. Yep, nice shot from Ryan mcneil Lamswood there to score two. Absolutely. So that is a deuce for Ryan mcneil Lamswood, and he's going to jump out to a 5-4 lead. We are at the fifth end of the break of... Uh, of this draw four game in the 2024 Newfoundland Tankard. We're going to take a few minutes and we'll be back uh, with sixth end action in about five minutes.
All right, welcome back here. We are in the sixth end of the 2024 Newfoundland tanker. It's draw four, and we are broadcasting high above sheet three here in the Remax Center of the St. John's Curling Club. Our feature game today is the team, two teams that are on top of the standings at three and zero. Oh. Team Ryan McNeil Lambswood against Team Andrew Simmons. Right now, Ryan McNeil Lambswood has a five four lead over Andrew Simmons. I want to say thank you to Emily Neary, who just joined us in the broadcast booth for some fifth end action. In the booth today, it is Steve Sporty Bragg, along with four-time tankered winner, Mr. Mark Nosley. Mark, what do you expect to see in the second half of this game? Much of the same as we saw in the first half, Steve. Both teams were exchanging blows. A few miscues on both sides, but we have a one-point game here. And uh, I'm looking now, I'm thinking Andrews, uh, Simmons has to hammer in six, and he's going to be looking for a deuce, if not more. So I expect to see some rock, potentially some rocks in play and get the guys looking at some different angles. For sure, Ryan came in there in the top of the eight foot, Simmons through the corner guard, and, and now Ryan is going to possibly come in and tap his own or throw a, is he throwing a three or is he coming in the house there, Mark? Yeah, I heard over... Uh, I got some information in the fifth end break there that in this year's field, there's only one team with the same squad as last year, Team Lambswood. They had the same four guys last year in the tankard. So every other team has made some adjustments. There's a couple of new teams. and Because uh, what you find in curling with a lot of the top teams, there's a fair bit of continuity with certain teams. And I was fortunate enough to play with some guys for a long period of time, 10, 12, 15 years. And uh, it does make a difference. Uh, certain players get pretty comfortable. And, you know, you sort of know without thinking what people are going to do. So that's just a little side note that they're the only team with the same foursome as last year. That's an interesting stat, Mark. And no doubt, uh, to kind of finish off your career, you had a great five-year run with the man, the myth, the legend. Oh, and then some. <laughs> Anyhow, Mark, uh, by the way, uh, we do have two games that are that are already over. Uh, on sheet six, Greg Smith make the final 10-2 to two over Dylan Hancock. That will bring Greg Smith to 3-1. and one. Uh, Dylan's going to sit at 0-4. And, and on sheet five, uh, Nathan Young has defeated uh, Dave Thomas, so that puts uh, Nathan Young at 3-0. and oh. Still undefeated, and he is the uh, he is the defending champion. And uh, Dave Thomas will go to zero and three. So two finals already in the books, Mark. Well, we got a couple of games left, and uh, on sheet four, uh, Walt Terrell Walters uh, got a seed of three in the fifth on Team Tipple to take a seven three lead. So uh, that game is still up. We need to keep an eye on. And on our feature game here, it's a a four three game. So the game is pretty tight. And uh, I'm saying right now, this game is going to go down to the last rock. I think you're right. I think we're in for an exciting last five ends, Mark. Uh, it's going to be a good finish. And again, can't emphasize enough, this is a big game in terms of the standings of this 2024 tankers. No, this, uh, whoever can pull this game out uh, puts themselves in an a extremely good position to get to the playoffs. Oh, Most so. teams, when you start, don't really care if they finish first, second, or third. But you can't win if you're not in the playoffs. So you just got to get to those one of those top three positions. So whoever wins this is going to be four and zero. Even the team that loses is still in a good shape at three and one. But uh, four and zero would be the start that you would want if you can get us. Absolutely, Mark. Uh, couldn't agree more. So uh, we do have a few rocks in play here now. Uh, Lammy's Lion won top eight foot, and he's going to ask his second Graham Weagle, I think, to draw another one in there is the call mark and try and lie too. I did check, uh, just if anyone's wondering, Weagle is a well known name in the curling circles. Of course, Lisa Weagle brought the tick shot to fame. Uh, and from what I'm told, Graham is no relation to Lisa Weagle. Well, that's always nice to know. One of those facts that nobody really cares about. <laughs> <laughs> and I said that Graham was coming into the house. I don't know if that was the call after he has put a guard up there. And uh, he's got Andrew Simmons thinking. Uh, 
Ryan does have that rock, and it's you know covered by those two guards now. So I think Andrew's going to clear some granite in front of the house. Well, before he shoots or talking about it, I just want to mention I just got a text from uh, Glenn Josephson, a friend of mine in uh, Nova Scotia who's listening to our broadcast. And he's done most of his curling in Nova Scotia and is a multiple-time Nova Scotia champion in mixed and men's and, and seniors and masters. But uh, he started his career back in the, at the old St. John's Curling Club in 1962. And, uh, and since then, and so he knows a lot of the roots and the history of the game here having grown up in St. John's, and just a bit of a shout-out to Glenn Josephson, and thanks for the kind words, Glenn. Awesome. That's uh, that's great stuff. Great to hear that, uh, Mark. Love to hear people are listening, uh, not only across our province, but across our country, and uh, glad that we could bring the action to you, and very thankful to have great technical support. Probably a good time to give the shout-out uh, all these camera angles uh, and the this, this scoreboard and stuff, we, we couldn't do that alone. Big shout-out to Trevor Bartlett. And uh, Kevin Foley's been helping out as well this week from a technical perspective, and we really appreciate everything that they're doing. Yeah, we just see a, a great shot by uh, Stephen Trickett to open up the front here. That Simmons, Simmons was in a little bit of a quandary here. He had... Uh, Lambsford had multiple uh, pads seen blocked off, and so a uh, triple peel by Stephen Triggett changes the water and the beans, as they say. So now Lambsford has gone back with a straight guard here. I feel like I should rename Trickett the pinball wizard. The, the rocks were bouncing all over the place. That was a great shot by Steve Trickett. Well, now we're in the second half. Uh, teams are going to start looking at the scoreboard a little closely. So with five ends to go, Simmons has the hammer, so... Uh, Bearing a blank end, that would be three hammers to two for Simmons. So uh, teams now are trying to finagle. Everybody wants to have the hammer in a tight game coming home. So teams, uh, both skips will start thinking about how they want to play each end here. So they can maneuver uh, to have the hammer in the tenth. Because like you said, the way this game is going... Uh, I feel it's going to go down to the last end and the last shot here. But that right, that guard just over curled a hair. And so Simmons has a chance here to... They can hit this and play a nice, probably about a five-foot roll behind the corner. I think that was the call, Mark, to play in, uh, playing to remove that rock. And you're right, if they could ever roll that behind the corner, that would be a great shot by Colin Thomas. I think they're pretty close. Going to make be, a curl at the end there, be, Mark. Going to be close. He's rolling over. He got a beauty, folks. A ah, beauty. So, now what happens now? Lambsworth has to make a decision. Does he chase the corner or does he come around the middle? And he's indicating he's coming back around the corner. This is exactly where uh, Simmons wants to be playing. Mark, uh, for those at home who don't curl a lot, uh, that shot that was just made, uh, you, you might get bonus points for that. I, just a, It's so hard to make that perfect roll over behind the corner guard and just an extremely well-executed shot by Team Simmons. Uh, I'm, not much, I'm not much for giving bonus points. That's the shot he had to play, so just do your job, soldier. And that, <laughs> that's what it comes down to. Wowzers. That was the shot at hand. That's what he had. That's what the skip asked him for. Speaking of a good shot, you don't get bonus points for doing what you're supposed to. That's a pretty good shot by Daniel Bruce. I think he's partly open because he did roll slightly into the uh, into the eight foot, but still a good rock. And he did push Team Simmons' rock out in the open, albeit on the outside of the twelve foot. I think Simmons is taking a look at this though, Mark, and he feels he can. He's looking to see if he can hit it retain his shot without jamming it by two i think i think he's i think he can he can hit and roll in and lie two i think he might try to see if he can get inside of it there he right. goes yeah, yeah there i saw him with the broom too mark i think he just indicated just maybe back line or a shade more than back line there's a fair bit of curl here and the sweepers are so good that if he's tight by that long guard by that guard he might be able to get inside her with back line weight which would start all of a sudden then you're going to bring three into play here 
So he's asked his third, Colin Thomas, who's a CPA and uh, works in finance and accounting at Provincial Airlines, to uh, try and make this shot and get the inside roll, but they haven't laid a brush to it. Mark? I think now they're going to try to roll the other way. No. Okay, just never had the right line. Probably a little too much weight to get that inside roll. He was probably closer to a hack weight than back line. And as a result, just never got the bend in the rock that he needed. He still does lie too, and we're deep in that it's in. I think we are into the, uh, we're going to be into the first skip rock for Lammy. So he's lying too, and the guys are looking at it. Mark, now are they, are they going to try to get the inside roll on this? Well, the column did roll into the eight foot a bit, so there's more room there now than there was previously. So I think now there is plenty of room for uh, or uh, Lambswood to get an inside roll here. Again, with the ice he's got, uh, they're just playing. Well, with the more, with the extra room he has, I think he's probably playing at like a hack weight. Agreed, Mark. Soft board shot. So coming out of the hack here now. And you'll know early but to hop with the sweeping if he's going to be close. Aaron Feltham's been on it the whole way. Oh, now he's off it to hold the line. And now they got Dan Bruce on to make the curl. They're close because they're on and off this, Mark. He rolled a bit beyond the guard, but he, he rolled in front, almost like a freeze on uh, the Simmons stone. So still a very good shot, but it does allow Simmons to make that come around again. Yeah, it's going to nullify that back blue, well, so that, that one is, is no longer well, likely going to count. But the, the the shot for two is still there if Simmons can come behind well, and bury well, it. Where Lambs would roll, it takes away a three-ender. But... The deuce is done on with a nice come around here by uh, Simmons. And you knew as soon as Colin Thomas made that long roll, the rest of the end was going to be over in this this side of the sheet behind that one guard. And you know, Simmons threw that guard for a reason, and you you know, you might take you it might take half a dozen shots to get the play over there, but eventually they got it over on that side. So I can tell you I was speaking with Andrew Simmons uh, yesterday, and I mean he is locked in. He wants to win. This 2024 tankard, he's had one taste of it. In 2019, he was at the tankard, which was played in Brandon, Manitoba. I think on that team, it was Adam Bolin, Chris Ford, and Keith Jewer. Uh, and that was five years ago. So he really wants to get back and get another tankard uh, added to his resume. Another briar, excuse me. So Mark, like seems you said, like you got a, a chance like for got, two. It seems like you got a lot of room on this rock. This is not, uh, he's getting by the guard, but plenty of room here. Yeah, and it's, it's still going to be fairly high in the rings. Coming hard there now. I'm going to hammer it and bury it as much as, or curl it as much as they can. I think uh, Ryan Lambswood can still get to the nose of that and pass it by his own. But again, they have to be careful here that they don't jam it. If he can pass it by his own, I think it'll, only be, it'll be a force of one. But if he can, uh, if he hangs it out or it doesn't curl as much. Yeah, he's got to be careful. That, that's uh, higher up in the eight foot. He's got to be careful of that jam. You never, ever want to jam it on your, I don't know if you ever jam it on your yellow and push your yellow out and don't touch that blue. Well, you never want to give up that, three that would be That would be a that possibility is there, does exist. But I think with the curl here, if you play it right with just a down, like, uh, through through house weight, you can get to the nose of that, and in which case you'll force, you'll force uh, Andrew Simmons to take one. So Marcus, Lammy goes back to the hack. Uh, I knew Lammy was a good golfer, but I was talking to Danny Bruce. This past summer, Lammy shot a 62 at the Herman Seaside Links in Stephenville. Was that, uh, for, was that for nine holes? Oh, that was for 18. That was a course record. 62. 10 under par. That is just unconscious. I've only seen two 62s in my life. One I shot on Tiger Woods Golf on the PlayStation 5. And two <laughs> was you playing the front nine at Ballahaley. I was going to say that that's, that might be my course record for nine holes. <laughs> 62. What a round of golf that must now, have been. That's a big shot here, Steve. Absolutely. He got lots of weight. 
Can't afford to jam it, Mark. Like we can't talked about. Can't afford to jam it. He looks like he got a nice shot. Again, it's all weight. Just through weight, which is what I, I, I said he needed to throw to get that, that kind of curl. That's just a pistol shot. And uh, Simmons is probably going to just draw for one. Yeah, he's go. not gonna he's not gonna take that on at all. That's a fantastic. No, shot well, you take Lambert. it on. It's only for one, so the easier shot here is just to draw the eight foot. Take your point, tie game. But now the advantage now with four inches ago goes back to uh, Lambswood. I think now in seven, assuming that Simmons makes this, I think in seven you'll see Lambswood try to potentially get a blank, keep the hammer in eight. High game for teams to score in the eighth end. Uh, the percentage of uh, winning percentage is somewhere around 75 to 80 percent. That's what I thought it was. Absolutely. Yep. So always a big end to, to score in a, in a tie game. He's got to make this first mark. I mean, it, this it's never well, automatic. So you got to make sure that you uh, put this uh, in the eight foot or never automatic. But uh, you know, you should be able to make these shots 19 out of 20 times, if not more. That looked like it just grabbed a bit. Yeah, it's, they're going to have to work this hard, Mark. They're going to have to work it hard to get there. It's going to be close. Uh, he's okay. It just, just got there. Jump. But it looked like it grabbed up just over the hog line. You can see Andrew just That's trying to be careful. Uh, yep. Thought it might have picked something up. Yep. Uh, so that was that was a little scary at the end of that shot. Well, that you know if that picks something up and doesn't make it, it's a steal of two, which is a huge turnaround. Tie game to being down three. So. <laughs> So, Mark, after six ends of play, uh, this draw four of the 2024 Newfoundland Tankard, uh, the score right now is uh, Team Andrew Simmons five, Team McNeil Lambs, Ryan McNeil Lambswood five in our feature game here, a battle of two undefeated teams who both sit at 3-0 and in the standings. Well, right now it's uh, still on course to uh, come down to a 10th tenth end, tenth end uh, deciding end. And uh, tie game, I'm thinking Lambert now is thinking about a blank seven. So the only yeah. other game on the, on the ice right now is we, we mentioned two finished early. Uh, we've got Parker Tipple, who's down seven to three to Harold Walters. And Parker is currently drawing against two Harold Walters counters. He's got to find a piece of the eight foot to score in the sixth end. And I think on that rock, Parker came up a little light. So I think that's going to be a steal of two on ice four, Mark, uh, and a 9-3 lead for Harold Walters after six minutes. Yeah, I think now we're having handshakes on ice four with the steal of two by Walters. Final score, 9-3. Nine, 9 for Walters, 3 for Tipple. And uh, they're going to call it a day. They'll go back and regroup and get ready for tomorrow's action. So the only game left is uh, the feature game we have here with uh, Team Simmons versus Team McNeil Lambswood. And we have a bit of a barn burner. Tie game through six. We do, Mark. And just on uh, on that ice four final, so that will put Parker Tipple at 0-3. And, and now Harold Walters climbs back to 500 and sits at 2-2 two and two in the standings. Now this is Harold Walters' uh, first tankard. He's been playing about 25 years and he was pretty excited to have a chance to get to get one in and uh, he got a couple of wins so that's always pretty positive. So Mark, uh, <clears throat> Aaron Feltham just uh, attempted to come in behind that guard that was a little bit off center line. Uh, he's tucked it in a little, but there's probably about two-thirds open. Andrew Simmons is going to now play like a board waiter type shot, maybe a control weight, and remove that yellow. Uh, I don't know how deep this end is going to get in terms of uh, number of rocks. It, it is the seventh end. I think, like you said, Ryan McNeil Lambs would love to get a blank in this end if he could. Absolutely. If he can get a blank at seven, three inches to go, he'll, it'll be uh, two hammers to one in a, in a tie position. So it would heavily favor uh, Team Lambswood here. So 
from Simmons' point of view, he would like to either steal or force. Even a force here would be okay for Simmons. He'd be down one, but he'd have to hammer in the eighth and presumably 10th ends, because right now, like I said a couple ends ago, these guys are starting to think about how we get the hammer coming home, because it looks like it's going to go down to the last rock here in 10 ends. Alex Smith made a nice shot. He hit that uh, rock and rolled over to the back 12 foot, and now Aaron Feltham is playing a hit on that rock. And it looks pretty good, Mark. Yes, he makes the hit. Well, he had Stick. to stay. He played a freeze here. You, uh, Ryan doesn't want too many rocks in play if he's trying to blank. But the hit and stay here was important. If, if uh, Feltham had rolled out, Sims is going to come around the guard, and the force is back on. So to keep Andrew away from that guard, they need to hit and stay out here in the wing. Now, Andrew's going to hit it off, so he doesn't want to take a chance in playing a draw and giving any kind of chance for Lambswood to get a deuce here. So, But at the same time, he doesn't want to blank. So uh, it's still early in the end. Nice shot by Steve Trinkett to make the nose hit. Uh, Steve works with the Compass Group and is Quality Assurance Health and Safety Manager. But we need a Lambswood is looking for a hit and stay here from uh, Graham Weagle. He is, and they got Dan Bruce on this initially to try and curl it, but they don't seem too concerned now. I think he's going to be pretty good, Mark, and he is. There you go. Nice shot there. But again, the key here is to keep that rock in the back of the 12 foot on that side as far as Lambswood is concerned. Uh, there's no steel, there's no force, and he, if they keep exchanging rocks here, he'll be able to get the blank. But again, it's still early in the end. A lot can happen. So if Steve Trickett ever rolls out on this, is uh, Lammy running up and peeling that guard then? He might. If you want the blank, that would be what you would do. But again, another hit and stay by Stephen Trickett here. So now um, Ryan Lambs was going to ask Graham Weagle for another hit and stay. So and there, if you've noticed, all the hits here have been on the intern, and it runs fairly straight here. And again, we've alluded to it earlier, all these players are pretty nice throwers. So it's, it should be, it's never routine, but you should be pretty close all the time here. Hey, right, Mark, they've seen six or seven rocks now go up, up up, the sheet on that very particular line. Now, all of a sudden, a little roll to the inside, and maybe that changes the shot around a little bit. They're still going to play the intern. Yeah, um, I, don't think, I don't think Simmons wants to roll over behind that guard right now. It's too early, and if he does, he's behind the T line. He might force Lambs with the draw and freeze on it, which all of a sudden now brings two into play. And in a tie game, Andrew doesn't want to give up two. I think hit and stay, and if he, if he gets a chance to play a role, it would be on maybe his last rock or something like that to try to force a, uh, a one point. But again, another hit and stay by Colin Thomas. There's trading hits here. You mentioned all the national championships. Colin, uh, I don't think we mentioned yet, but he won the 2011 university championships right here in St. John's, Newfoundland. He was the skip of that team. We talked about it last night. He beat Brendan Botcher in the semifinal of that university championship here in St. John's. So a good field to get that win. You're right, but now uh, we got a rollout here by uh, Dan, Dan Bruce. Bruce. Dan, Dan rolled out. So and now Simmons is looking to come in behind and trying so to get the force in play, I think. So that was a bit of a mistake there, and uh, it could come around here, and the blank might be off, in which case Lambs will have to uh, shift tactics and push for, push for a deuce. But now this rock has to be in front of the T-line. If he ever slips long, a bit of an advantage falls back over to Team Lambswood here. <laughs> So this is the third Colin Thomas with his second rock of this seventh end. Uh, we're in a 5-5 tie between the top two teams in the field right now. Uh, Ryan McNeil, Lanswood, and Andrew Simmons. Obviously, Nathan Young as well sits at 3-0. and But the winner of this is going to go to 4-0 and and assume first place in the standings. Yeah, this rock looks a little wide here, Steve. 
it's going to be wide open. Weight wasn't bad. I don't know if he got a little wide or if the, uh, the broom was a little generous. But uh, Landsworth, he can hit and roll in. A bad shot here if he's playing a blank. Just hit and roll back to the open eight foot. Simmons is going to make a play on it. He's not going to take a chance to give it up two in a tie game. So he would hit it. Right, Mark. I don't. I don't mind that. Uh, I, I, if you're challenge. trying to blank, I don't like playing the hit and roll here behind the guard, because then you're going to force Simmons to come around it. Working it, I think he might get it on the nose. Maybe a little flop. He does make the flop. No, a beauty roll by Daniel Bruce. But now it's it's. Is right on the center line, so it's just deep enough that Simmons can freeze it and be shot. So a good shot here by Simmons, and probably going to be no blank. Yeah, if he can make that corner freeze and be shot, he really chokes off the forefoot, Mark. Yeah. No, that all that all became available when. Uh, Colin Thomas got. I don't like. I said I don't know if he was a little wide on his last rock, or if the if the broom that Andrew put down was just a little generous for the curl. So I fully expect Andrew to to uh, come closer, make this shot. He's always got good control of his draw weight. They know the line down here, so it's the big shot. Bring the force into play. Andrew turns 50 in July, Mark, uh, July 6th, and will be eligible for the senior ranks, which makes him, as you would call it next year, a baby senior. A baby senior, absolutely. They're working on here now. This looks pretty close to a pistol, but they have to be shot rock, or it's no good. Pretty close, Mark. I, oh, that's a great shot. That's a great shot. Is he shot? He is shot, absolutely. He, well, he pushed the, pushed the yellow yeah. back yeah. an inch or two. And now it's a really tough deuce for Ryan McNeil. Well, Lanswood. because he's in front, it's a foot in front of the tee line. Uh, Lanswood can't even sit on it and be shot without being wide open. So that's just a great shot. The only way to get that out in line two is to come around on the out turn, which is really tough. Ooh. We're yeah. right behind the sheet, Mark. If you come in the out turn, I mean, that is overburied on the out turn, I think. But there is a little, there, there's a bit of curl there. You we, would. We, 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 if, no more than back line, back 12 weight. You might be able to squeeze it out in line two. Could be there, but you have to absolutely paper that, that guard. I don't even think they've looked at that shot yet. Well, in this part, in this point of the game, you can't discount anything. So I don't think he has anything here on the intern. And I don't like running back the top blue one. I'd rather have a go at the out turn, come around. So Mark, if I don't think he can do anything here on the intern. They call the timeout, and you're their coach, and you go out on the ice. What are you telling them here? What what shot do you think they should well, play? And they are calling the timeout now, so we're going to have lots of time to talk about well, it. I, I think the blank is off. So how do you get two? How do you transition to get two? So I think the only shot to bring two into play is that out turn come around, back 12-foot weight. If you can hit two-thirds of it, you can squeeze it by the yellow. You're only going to roll maybe a foot. You might give Simmons a double, but he loses shooter. The blank might be back on that way. But that's the only shot you got to try to get to. And if you don't make it, Simmons can guard it again or draw the other side of the forefoot deep. So he's lying one, two, and then you just hit and stay or draw, draw down for your one. So you'll see in your picture there now, Coach Gary Ryan, who's uh, been coaching for a long time. He's out on the ice having a chat with the team in terms of... Uh, what the possibilities well, might be on the shot. If you play the out turn, come around, and you hit the guard, okay, so, or you don't make it, and you hit your own yellow one and roll away. 
So Simmons is going to come down to the other side of the forefoot, lie to. So you, you, everything's wide open. You just come down and hit and stay or draw the pin for your one. It's not like you got to make a run back against three or come to a tight port. That intern side is completely accessible to get to the pin. Here's a good overhead shot, Mark, of those rocks. Uh, you can see it's almost dead corner frozen, uh, almost fully in the forefoot. I mean, it's just, it was you couldn't walk it down or in a better place. You couldn't walk it down any better. That was a great shot by Simmons. Fantastic shot. I think one of the options that they have been talking about, Mark, is playing like a maybe a back line, back eight, back 12 sort of weight coming down and bumping the blue maybe and just, just unlocking that yellow a little but bit you, but and, and, leave, I, and staying frozen to it. I but think that's what but if, you do, if you do about. that, you're going to be in front of, you're still going to be second shot. Simmons can just put a cap on it, another guard, and you got to draw the pin for one anyway. So the only way to change that narrative is that you have to lie one, two after this shot. And the only way to do that is the out turn come around. Now, I think with the right weight, that is there. Because all the curl on that side is from right where that guard is, from that halfway out down through the house is where the curl is. I, I don't think they're going to change much playing this here on this intern side, if you're asking me. But this is what they feel they can do. I just don't know if that out turn is there, Mark, because we're standing right behind it. It's really got to paper that guard. But I hear what you're saying. You want to you want to try and move that, but I think they've opted for it, the... I'm not saying it's not tough, but I'm, I'm saying it's the only chance they got of getting two, unless something, Simmons does something really crazy. So they have opted to come down and play on that blue. Uh, with that ice, Mark, what kind of weight do... It's got to be well, a minimum of back line with he, that ice. He, he can't be shot unless he rolls off it, which means he's going to be wide open for Simmons. So Simmons comes down and hits, and then Lambs might have a hard time scoring, depending how the rocks are lined up here. So I, I just mentioned Lamy shot 62. He's going to have to come up with some magic on this one, and he's, right out of his hands. He's over curling big time here. They're working it, and I don't think that's going to get by the guard at all. And Mark, I don't know if he got that going or picked up something, well, but that, that I, wasn't he was you know, sure, close. Well, he, his weight was only only top four. I I don't know. I think he might have wanted a bit more weight than that. Cause that but it did curl early. So now Simmons can just throw a... Well, I think Simmons can come right down to the top of the forefoot here. If he puts one on top of the forefoot, there's no double on the blue because the blue is in front of that yellow one. So you come down on, top, on the center line, half in the forefoot. What's Lamswood got? He got to draw wide to the edge of the pin to score one. Is there a need, though, to even come to the top four, Mark? Could you could you just come top 12 or even a tight three and choke off that button to make the make the draw harder? Do you, you need can, to come but, right but the, deeper, the, the deeper you come into the rings around the center line, the tougher you make that draw. So I think right now there's a steal opportunity looking at Simmons. And a steal of one here changes how the end play. That puts Simmons up one, even though Lambs would have the last rock in eight. He needs, he's somewhere along the way, he's probably going to have to get a deuce. So I think they are having that discussion, Mark, of whether they, whether they bring this in the house or not. Well, I think the way they're lined up, the only way he can hurt himself is if he comes side by side of his own. But I think he, but we're, what they're talking about now. They're talking about playing on their own, Mark, with that kind of ice. They're talking I, about a I, board waiter or something. I, I, I don't think you need to do that. That's making it more, I think that's making it more difficult than it needs to be. Because what happens now, he might make the tap tap and push the yellow rock out, but a shooter rolls too far, which makes it a lot easier for Lambswood to score one. If you just draw to the top of the forefoot, and you are half in, you're lying two, there's no, there's, Lambs have got to make a pistol to score one. And he got to go wide, it stays out straighter, comes hard, take two to the lights, he's all over the top one. 
it's not that easy of a draw. I, I'm with you on this, Mark, because we we're standing behind a sheet, and that blue is almost dead buried. This shot may make Ryan McNeil Lambs with his last shot easier. easier. I'm with you 100% on that. And I think they're going to have to work this oh, yeah. hard. They've, they've come off it. But it all depends how far he's going to roll. Now watch. Okay. Now, he's lying too. He rolls out, but now Lambs just got a straight draw. Full four foot, he scores one. Or if he drew to the top of the four foot, he's lying too, and he's forcing Lambs to make a much, much tougher shot than what he has here in front of him. Yeah. I now think again, Simmons might still might steal one here. Who knows? But um, you know, you always assume the other guy's going to make their last shot or their next shot. So you know, you can't skip hoping for somebody to miss. You're not going to win many games. So in that scenario. I think they've they've let Lambs was pretty happy right now. He got this shot. Yeah, Mark. They they say if you if you can't if you can't draw you can't skip. And he, in my opinion, Andrew just gave him an out. He did him an absolutely shot. And now uh, this is a shot that Ryan McNeil Lambs would needs to focus on and put this in the forefoot because he could have been facing a much more difficult shot to score as one in this end. Well, they need to make it, but. They're not worried about it right yet. It's just a bit of on-off sweeping here. So he must be pretty close. Oh, here they go. Oh. I think they're feeling pretty good about this, Mark. I think it's going to be a good okay, rock, yeah. and he is going to lay this right yeah. on the lid, I believe. But now, if you had to do that and get by a rock in the top of the forefoot, it's a, it's a bit more difficult. But anyway, they gave him an out. Ryan took it. And he's pretty happy now in that situation how to, to get the point. To a certain degree, both teams are probably pretty happy. Ryan had an easier shot to get one, and at the end of the day, uh, Andrew Simmons did get the force. Well, the thing uh, with Simmons' last rack, if you put it top the top of the ball and you're, you're, you're making him make a good shot, if Simmons hogged it, Andrew still got a draw for one. So I don't understand the benefit of going after it and rolling away because it doesn't change if he threw his last rock away Andrew Lambs have got the same rock so he never did anything to change the outcome or potential outcome at the end with a rock to go but that he had to throw so I, I, I just don't understand the thinking on the what you're trying to get the other guy to do there so it was a score of one in the seventh end for Ryan McNeil Lambswood. Uh, we are in draw four. Uh, we're moving into the eighth end of this feature game. It is the only uh, game remaining on the ice. And Ryan McNeil Lambswood is up 6 5 on Andrew Simmons as they start the eighth end of a game that you uh, referenced, Mark. We all believe is going to come right down to the last rock. This is going to uh, be an exciting last three ends. Uh, when, when I used to play a lot on, on tour, Steve, but this, these are the kind of games I loved. That, you know, these games a lot of times bring the best out of, out of players, uh, are, are, you know, the better, better players in the country. You like being in these tight games. It's the kind of thing that turns your crank, as they say. So Aaron Felton put up the center guard to start the end. Uh, they took a look at it to see if it was touching the center line or not. Uh, it may just be off the center line, hard to tell, but Andrew has asked his uh, lead, Alex Smith, to uh, drop one behind that guard, and he's made a pretty good shot, Mark, right up to the just biting forefoot. Yeah, good rock. Alex has had draw weight all game, as we, as we knew he would, where he's our teammate all for the last couple of seasons. He is, and with a very solid team behind him, uh, as we know, he did win the 2023 Senior Provincial Newfoundland Championships and had a good showing out in Vernon, B.C. And uh, that team, Smith, has continued to roll as a bunch of old fellas sit in second place at 9-2 and two, uh, on the scoreboard there of the St. John's Super League. You're right, on that. You're, you're right, um, you're right about that, uh, Steve. And uh, you know, the team is still rolling, rolling, rolling right along. <laughs> but here we go. That's a, a little short, but I felt him. He would have liked that in. But no, I think you're going to see Andrew come around again. Same shot for Alex. Yeah, Smith. if he could. He just played it. They, they know the line. 
if they can't can, they can't hit the guards. And eighth end, if he can put from Andrew's point of view now, he's down one playing eight. So either he wants to play eight and nine, have the hammer coming home, or put two on the board and eight, force Lansbury to one and nine and be tied with the hammer. So that's what it, that's the thinking that Simmons got to have on his mind right now. He'd love to put this right on the face of that first one he uh, delivered, and as we know from playing with him, uh, Mark Alex he's loves little, to go to the draw. That's he's his a little, wi shot. little wider line here. They can just get a buy that one by a hair. <laughs> Just get a buy by a hair. That's not a bad shot. Still pretty covered by that center center line guard, Mark. Uh, that that one that Alex just threw. So two nice shots by Alex Smith, and now I think uh, Ryan McNeil Lanswood has called for his second Graham Weagle to run one of those yellows back into those two blue. Well, he, if he hits what he sees, he's he's going to double out the blues. Most. He's going to be uh, going to be close here. Oh, wow! Great shot by Graham Weagle. What a great shot by yeah. Graham Weagle! Absolutely, and I, that is an end changer right there. And as I like to say, Steve, great line call by the guy in the head. <laughs> a real nice shot by Graham Weagle came up big there. Uh, they tell me Graham is a big basketball fan. He's an Oklahoma Thunder fan. I can't, he, uh, I can't account for that. Uh, he he made the thunder uh, roll with that one. What a great shot! Uh, that was a bit of a bad, bit of a bad break there, I think, by uh, Stephen Trickett. Actually, Mark, the Oklahoma Thunder. They got some Canadian content there. She Gilgis Alexander, who could be the MVP of the the uh, NBA this year, and could be. Graham might be the MVP of that ga this game after making that great shot. What a super shot to And Steve, I just around. noticed that another one, another local celebrity curler just walked in three times, Newfoundland Seniors champion, Ross Young, here to watch his uh, son compete. He's not playing right now, but his son competed. He plays with uh, Team Greg Smith. And you mentioned that Alex Smith, who's on the ice, he did win that 2017 senior championship with yourself, Peter Hollis, and the aforementioned Ross Young. And the aforementioned Ross Young. And what a team that was. And I'll bet what a trip to Fredericton it was, too. So Graham Weagle, uh, Mark, well, is playing well, the well, draw right to the forefoot. It was the call. Well, as you know, Steve, just as a side point, that was a... Uh, Ross Young's third senior championship, and the farthest west he's ever been in those three championships was Fredericton. <laughs> <laughs> so for the for the for the people out west, Western Canada starts in New Brunswick. <laughs> not good for accumulating the air miles, I guess. No, absolutely not. But anyway, we got a big shot coming up here for Stephen Trickett, trying to double off the guards or get, try to get a bit of a run back here. Going to be close. Good shot. One out, kept kept the Rocky hit in the rings. I think you're going to see Lambs will play a hit and roll on that. This end is not setting up the way uh, Simmons wants. He's, he would either like to pop a two here or take a blank in the nine. And from La from uh, Ryan Lambswood, McNeil Lambswood's point of view, he'd love to get a force or a steal. He doesn't want a blank. If he could make this roll, Mark, that would go a long way to try and get a force in this end. Boy, been a lot of nice rolls in this game, and there's another one. Wow, what a great shot by Dan Bruce, and that's going to put some heat on Andrew Simmons, and the force is definitely in play right now, Mark. Well, going to take a big shot here by Colin Thomas. This can, you can, you can clean everything here. Just a little bit on the high side, you get them all going. And Colin can throw the weight, so I don't know what the weight call is here, but I, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be at least normal or up. Just the one. Mark, he just yeah. missed it. I think with that extra weight, they tend to float a bit. Makes the line call awful tough. But now you're going to see Lambs would just replace that guard. 
Well, we're getting deep into this eighth end, Mark, and uh, obviously Ryan's got two uh, counters there, a corner for one's corner frozen on the other, and he's going to put a guard on this, and uh, he's going to make it challenging for Andrew Simmons to get a deuce in this end. Well, at some point, Simmons may, may have to uh, audible his uh, this end strategy. I think if they put a guard here, I think they got to try to run it back again. But now this is starting to, it looks like it's starting to curl a bit a curl a bit on him. It may over curl a little, a little bit. Yeah, they're trying to, well, they haven't laid a brush to it. I think Colin Thomas might be able, if he hits what he can see, he might be able to squeeze two of them out. But now that said, you're probably going to lose the shooter, which means Lambert can still come around two guards and the force is still on at the very least. Yeah, Mark, if you play that, if you take on that double, you're definitely losing the shooter. So I think... Uh, Andrew's that, Andrew, Simmons is playing the double peel here and hope to get the, the yellow one coming back into the ro two rocks in the rings. So you're looking at trying to hit maybe a, a thin half, a half rock. But again, coming with the heat. This is a big shot, Mark, because we're running out of rocks in this eighth end, so he'd really like to make the double peel here if he could. Okay, you got the double peel roll, the shooter over. So the rock here that uh, Lambert needs to guard now is the rock in front that's hit mostly in the eight foot. That's the rock he got to guard. A nice double peel by Colin. Unfortunately, the shooter were rolled over. It, if he has to make the draw around that on his last it's rock, going, going it's going to, to make it a, yeah. a little more challenging. It's going to put that in Andrew Simmons' eye. And he's going to have to be careful well, with that. Well, I don't think he can draw inside of it. So now that draw on that intern is going to be wide. And then there's loads of curl there, but it's a it's a more difficult draw. You're only going to be drawn to a, sl a sliver of the forefoot as opposed, if that wasn't there, you can draw to the fattest part of the forefoot circle. So right now there's a big advantage the way the rocks are lined up for uh, Ryan McNeil Lambswood here. Well, Lammy is going to try and throw the guard. Uh, they tell me he's a big fan of Game of Thrones. Have you ever watched Game of Thrones? I wouldn't know anything about Game of Thrones. That would make two of us. I was I, more, I'm, I'm more of a get smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's on Netflix. I could be wrong. It's a series. I don't uh, watch much of Netflix. But uh, anyways, in his spare time, he likes to watch that show. Well, this draw looks like it's going to be pretty close here. Got to guard the top one. They're working it hard on the end mark to get the curl. I, th I think they got enough of it covered that you can't double them out. You definitely can't double them out, Mark. Well, you can probably play the play on, on the top one, but you're jamming it all day. Maybe they try and play it and roll over behind the corner, but then... But the yellow one is only going to, that yellow one's going to end up in the forefoot, Absolutely. and then Lambert just blocks, the, blocks that hole out front, and Sims has got to draw for one. So right now, there's a good situation for Lambswood. That's what we just talked about, that one yeah. there. He can play the hit, but he's jamming that all day. He rolls over his second shot, and then maybe Ryan McNeil Lambswood comes in to lie too. Uh, well, he does, he does, well, he's up one. He doesn't need to lie too. If he blocks the hole, the only way that Simmons is getting two then is that long raise, and that's not, you, you know, you're probably going to draw for one before you play that. Great. I think Andrew is trying to figure out any way that he can manufacture a deuce, but the way things sit right now, that is not going to be easy. I think right now he's got to be thinking how he's going to score one. By playing this shot, what it does is the whack on top of the forefoot hits. It spins in a little bit to the forefoot. The shooter rolls over behind the blue guard. Lambswood plays the guard in the hole, but it opens up one side on the outturn side. It opens up that side of the forefoot for Simmons to draw for one. So maybe that's that's how I would be thinking about it, and I'm, uh, I can only assume Simmons is thinking it the same way. Alex Smith is uh, on the sweepers to work this hard. It crosses the hog line here. Well, I think now where that's wide open, I think uh, 
Lambswood, he doesn't want to hit and roll six inches and give him an easy double. Well, that's for the a thing, bank. Mark. If you don't hit this uh, properly and you just roll it a couple of inches, then there's an easy double there for Simmons. Well, so you got to be careful when you hit this. Uh, if, if you want to steal or force him to take one, you can just play the guard in that hole. I was just going to ask you, Mark, if, you, if you're uh, going after the steal, the guard is not a bad option here. Well, I, I, I doubt if Andrew would play that long raise for two. I think he'd drop for one. You could ever steal here, Mark. You take a two-point lead after eight ends. That's big. That's big. This game has been tight from the beginning. But right now, when you're looking at the scoreboard, that steal of two and three jumps off at you. But this shot here is not about hitting the blue one. It's about where your shooter rolls. You don't want to set up an easy double. They're working this hard, Mark. Uh, well, the thing about it, there's a double there for Simmons to score one, but I don't know. If he, he can't double and, and, and get the blank. I think just as a debate, he's taking a long look at it, is can he get enough clearance by that top yellow and make the double because that, that top yellow was pretty frozen. I don't, taking I, a good look at it. I don't, I don't think that double and roll out is there, so I don't, I don't think there's any blank. Oh, definitely the double and rollout is not there. I'm just wondering if he can, if he thinks he can get enough of that top yellow to spin spin that out. That's what he's concerned about. I think he can double him out, but uh, I think that was an opportunity to have a go at a steal for Lambswood. And no, Mark, pro we, no problem with hitting the blue rock for Lambs, but he, if he rolled another couple of inches, the steal is definitely on. But even if he nosed it, it's a tough double. But now, it w if he knows it, it would have been a double, a double, and squirt the shooter out for a blank. But now, this is not an easy shot. Not an easy shot, Mark. And we talked about scoreboard management. And I go back to a deuce, or being up two, if he was able to steal one then, uh, Lammy. Being up two after eight ends is a great spot to be. Uh, so... Anyhow, he opted not to do that, and he's left Simmons' his shot, but I think Simmons has got to almost paper that yellow to make this double. He's got the heat coming down here. I don't know. Let's see. Okay. Makes a double. One blue. Tied up. Six all after eight. Folks, we have a barn burner going at the St. John's Curling Club. It might be minus 45 outside, but it's about plus 25 inside. <laughs> yeah, Mark, the, this is going to come to a boiling point. We are uh, going into the ninth end, just two ends left, and we've got two teams that are th at 3-0 and uh, in this 2024 Newfoundland tankard, and both those teams are tied at six. Andrew Simmons and Ryan mcneil Lambswood. we're in for a great last half an hour of this game uh, as we... Try and determine who's going to take the top spot in the standings and move to 4 0. So, folks, in case you're just joining us, uh, we are starting the ninth in. We are in draw four of this 2024 Newfoundland Tankard. Our feature game here at the REMAX Center, the St. John's Curling Club, is Andrew Simmons and Ryan McNeil Lambswood. They are tied at six as we play the ninth in. They are the only remaining game out there on the sheet. We did have three games that did finish early. And just to recap, on ice four, uh, Team Harold Walters defeated Team Parker Tipple 9-3. to three. And uh, now Harold sits at 2-2, two two, while Tipple, uh, Parker Tipple moves to 0-3. Uh, on sheet five, Nathan Young uh, defeated Dave Thomas out of Port of Basque in the Gateway Curling Club 8-1. to one. Nathan goes to 3-0. Dave Thomas is now at 0-3. 
And on sheet six, uh, Greg Smith, two-time tanker champion in 2018 and 2021, did defeat Dylan Hancock 10-2. to Greg now sits at 3-1 and one in the standings, and Dylan Hancock is now 0-4. Oh so, Mark, uh, Andrew Simmons uh, is now going to try to freeze, uh, make a freeze attempt on uh, Alex's second rock here in the ninth end. Alex did put up a center guard, and Aaron Feltham made a really nice come around and Alex is looking to uh, freeze this, but I think he's well out there and maybe a little hot. Uh, looks like he's going to be a little bit long here. Daniel Bruce is sweeping it there, and he's back 12 or through. Not not what they were looking for. Lam I think Lambs would initially start this in looking for, looking for a blank, but if you can put two on the board... That would be okay also, but you got to be, he doesn't want to get caught being forced to one. Because then the advantage one down with the hammer coming home would be in Simmons's court. Yeah, it was a little uncharacteristic. Alex has had great control of his draw weight all game, just uh, slid a little heavy on that one. And now uh, Lammy has called for Aaron Feltham to put his second rock uh, of the end out in the wing there on the 12-foot kind of tee line. Well, they put this over here. We're going to see now. Simmons has, has a, a decision to make. Does he play a run back on his own? Well, actually, if, there might be a double off that one if that's in. Well, that's a bit of a miscue there. He did come up light, uh, of course, due to the free guard zone, which we play, Mark. Uh, and if you're watching at home and not familiar with that, for the first Five rocks at the end, or the fifth rock, you can't hit a rock. So uh, Team Simmons cannot hit that stone and have to leave it there. So they've opted to try well, once that, again to that, freeze. Well, that miss the, puts the advantage now. Gives Simmons a second crack at trying to make this corner freeze, which would be fine. And the line here is a bit better. I don't know. It still looks a bit long to me. Uh about the worst thing they could have done. Yeah, I heard Simmons yeah. at the end, he called for the sweep. He was calling the audible. He was trying to get that behind that rock when they knew it was going to be heavy. Well, but unfortunately, just ticked it and has rolled out to a position now where Ryan mcneil Lanswood can make a play on this. Second, Graham Weagles made some big shots this game, Mark. And, he uh, has indeed. But this is big. If they can get a little inside flip off that blue rock here. Not going to get the inside roll. Almost got the double. Just missed that rock in the back 12, but did roll to a nice spot out in the wing. And, and I think no, Andrew's going to have to deal with that. And there's no double because he can't see the shot rock. So that's not that's not a bad result at all. It was a lot easier to do that than to get that inside roll. That shot puts a, keeps a deuce going for uh, Team Lambswood. They need a nice shot out of Stephen Trickett here. I think he's going to try to play a long roll. He did get the inside roll, Mark, so pretty good shot by Steve. Just needed to roll it another foot, another and it would foot. have been an absolute pistol. Yeah, absolutely. That was a, it was a good shot. Well, it brings the play back into the middle for uh, for Simmons. And if he's trying to force, that's what, probably where he needs to be playing. But again now, there's a bit of room they can roll underneath, but I think the best play here, if he wants to get a deuce here now, is to roll back out to the wing. I think if you roll inside here, you're go just going to see Simmons. This is pretty tight. This is curling a lot, Mark. We're going to have to work it hard to get past that top yellow. And he does just get by. He made the double at the back, but now there's an opportunity for Simmons to hit and roll in here. Like a perfect roll here behind that rock in the 8-foot. And 
it's golden. Yeah, Simmons, uh, he'd love to get the force now and take the hammer. Absolutely. And well, if he, to do that, they're going to need a roll somewhere along the way here. And this is an opportunity right here. You know, Mark, we played Ryan McNeil Lambswood in the Rick Rousel. We had a bit of a rough spiel starting the year, and then uh, then we picked things up. But I remember we were playing him over, I believe it was on Ice 5. We were tied 2-2 two to two in the seventh, and uh, Lamby had hammer. So we were going after him for the force, and we did force him. We forced him to three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he would eventually win the game five to two. When, when you talk about that, we had a bit of a rough time. I, I, I don't know if that's the words I would use to describe how badly we played. So, okay, but we'll, we'll settle with We had a bit, of a bit of a rough time, and we forced him to a three spot. That was a hard start to the year. That was not pretty. But well, we, anyway, uh, back, but to the, back to the game here now. Colin just got the hit and stay. He knows it. So that was a bit of a miscue by those guys but now with uh getting down to the last part of this end here i think a hit and roll to the wing here is what they're is what they need here i think that's the ideal shot the optimal shot mark would be to hit this and, and roll to the wing i think he'd be very happy if he could make that shot that really came hard at the end yeah, they lost that one, Mark. They could have been on that a little harder and now gotten a further roll. And now there's a, there's a right more, back to Simmons. There's a bit more room here now for Simmons to work with on this roll. So nobody's made it yet. Well, I think Lambswood is trying to play to the wing here. And Simmons is trying to get into the middle. But nobody's made that roll. But the rolls, that they've been pretty tight. There hasn't been a lot of room to spare. But this, they got about a foot and a bit to work with here of a between the rocks and we're seeing good movement on this side of the sheet but they're they are out, working out, it really out, hard, hard is hair. it going to move too much mark uh looks like a really good shot wow. that's a great shot by colin thomas yeah. i think lambs have got to go peel that or not peel it he got to run it back if he peels it they just put the guard back I think he, he tried to run it back. That shot really changed the complexion of this end now, Mark. Completely. So Dan Bruce has got to come up with a, a real good shot here. Well, just a straight peel. You want to roll that shooter off. Lambswood in this situation, he can live. His tolerance, he can afford to give up one because then he'll have the hammer coming home. Simmons' point of view, he'd like to force Lambswood to get one, so he'd have the hammer coming home. So Simmons doesn't want to give up two, though, but he can live with giving up one. Same with Lambswood. They're calling for the guard on this, Mark. Uh, you just got to be really careful if you're Andrew Simmons. You have to make the good guard because if you don't, then all of a sudden... If you don't fully cover it, Ryan McNeil Lambswood can come down and tap his own and, and move that blue out of the rings, and then maybe he's flying too. So well, you got to make sure you put this in the right position. Well, the thing here, you put you know you put a guard on it, and if if you if you guard it right in front, if Lambswood makes the dead back, not bang bang bang, keeps his own behind the guard. There's not much you can do about it, but you got to guard it. But the longer, the better here. You don't want it too tight. Has it got to curl a bit yet? They're working hard on it. Uh, I think it's. I think it came enough that it does the job. I think it just curled enough, Mark. But they are looking at if they can access that yellow and, and tap it back. Or are they talking about just splitting those two yellows well i think what happens then if you split them into the eight both sides of the eight foot andrew comes around and freezes his own behind the guard now he's lying two and then there's a much a much more delicate draw for ryan and like we said the, the cardinal sin here now for ryan mcneil lambs would, would be to give up a steal of two that's not you don't want to bring that into play you played a peel here on, on the center guard play it thin you might catch one of your yellow ones and knock it into the rings so it forces Simmons to make sure he gets the guard on it. 
Plus, if you get one of those guards out of the way on the side, you still got that angle as opposed to a draw for one. And a risk and reward. You don't mind giving up one, and you might get two. But I think they've opted to play the guard mark and, like you said, run that run that guard back. And Lammy's going to fire some serious heat. This is going to be a missile, I think. They got to get it off. Okay, just got the straight peel. Simmons is going to put it back. And again, he just has to be really careful with the placement of this guard. You can't, you know, put this in the wrong place and let Ryan McNeil Lanza be able to access that yellow and make the shot for two. So as Simmons comes back here, uh, Lammy just threw his first rock. He's a he's a big Montreal Canadiens fan, and his third, Dan Bruce, is an Ottawa Senators fan, and the Senators uh, took it to the Canadiens last night. So hopefully those guys are still on talking terms. Well, I'll have to mention to Dan Bruce if he knows why the Senators drink tea out of a saucer, because Montreal has all the cups. <laughs> <laughs> I know why Rick Lyon lamps were for a reason. You might want to get in Aaron Feltham's there too. He's a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. Well, I can't. He hasn't. There. He hasn't tasted the cup in a long time. There's no accounting for that. Right? <laughs> so they are playing this uh, guard on Andrews' last rocket. Very important in terms of the placement. Uh -huh. I think he's throwing a really good curling shot here. And like you said, uh, Lambswood, he can. I guess he could tolerate a steal, but he's got a tough shot even to score one. Well, I think the easiest way to score two is to just redirect off the corner guard. I don't think he can get two playing in the outturn and into the middle here. I don't think he can see enough. you got to push it five feet and keep your shooter in the eight foot. I'm not sure it's there. So if he plays an intern down on the corner guard just for a redirect, you never know, you might get two. And like I said, the tolerance is he can give up one. He's down one with the hammer. So if somebody told them before the game they're going to be down one with the hammer going home, you'd take it 100% of the time. So, Mark, if there's, if there's not a shot there for two and he doesn't think he can make a shot for two and he's not attempting a shot for two and he wants to take the hammer into the 10th end and he's, he's okay to give up the steal, you could just throw it off the boards, couldn't you? Give yeah, the steal. But, but you could get two here. Could if if the if he's going to play the shot for two absolutely and if there is some kind of shot there, which I they think there might be. I would try it off the corner guard. I think that's the the best way. I don't know. I mean, you got a paste. They're playing the out turn at it, I believe. So if that's what they're playing, you got to have back line weight because you got to hit a quarter of a rock or a third of a rock if you paste when you paste the yellow one. You're hitting a quarter of a rock, maybe a slightly more. You got to knock it five feet and keep your shooter in the eight foot. Pretty freaking tough shot. Not playing off the guard mark. I think they're just trying no. to come down with a back line weight. This is this is going to be close. This is where the curl is. He's got to pace the yellow one. Working it really no. hard, Mark. Uh, I don't think I think it'll curl too much. Yeah. Going to chunk that top yellow. Yeah. So it is a steal of one for Andrew Simmons uh, in this ninth end of this fourth draw, the 2024 Newfoundland and Labrador men's tankard. And as we go to the 10th end, it's going to be an exciting finish with Team Andrew Simmons up 7-6 to six on Team Ryan mcneil Lambswood. Mark, you said this was going to come down to the last rock, and I have no doubt that it is. Well, that's what it's looking like now. We said that after the first end. <laughs> you know. Sporty from our point of view, you know, when you, when you know what you know, what what are we going to say? <laughs> and it's got to be cr pretty quiet out there on the ice. A lot of the games finished up early, as we mentioned before. Uh, wins for Harold Walters, Nathan Young, and Greg Smith. Well, all these guys out here have played in final provincial final games at different levels. So they it's not the first time they've been out there with one game that's tight and nobody else in the sheet next to them. So it's, it's, you know, sh that shouldn't make a difference to him. 
That's a good point. All these guys do have that experience. But if you're someone who hasn't played in that environment, it's, it's a different feeling when you're out there on the ice. And, you know, if no one's yelling, you can hear the fans going in the uh, or the, the air conditioning unit going. It's awful quiet out there. As they say, the silence is deafening. And, uh, well, it's like the first time when a cameraman comes out in the ice, everybody don't know what, how to react. And I can, only, I can only talk about my own experience. First time that happened to us in juniors was in Gander at the Newfoundland Canada Games way back in the 70s. And the cameraman comes out at the start of the second end. Well, neither team made a shot, but boy, did we all look good sliding out. Because <laughs> every, everybody's so concerned about the camera guy. But again, it's all a learning experience, how you deal with those situations. And, you know, most juniors go to the same set of emotions when that stuff happens. So again, you know, talking to your coach and how you learn stuff and how to handle those types of situations and how to park your emotions and carry on in the game and stay focused. Well, if there's one thing I can say, I've never looked good sliding out of the hack. Well, maybe that's because you use a hammer. <laughs> and, you know, I think, what is it only you and Randy Furby left in the country? It is. slide with the hammer? It is. So, you know. Only two competitive curlers, oh. folks, out there in Canada that uh, slide with the hammer. And we're going to hear that story till you're 95 years old. You are. Sure. You are. Actually, one of the umpires up in Vernon, uh, she told me that she, it warmed her heart to see someone sliding with the <laughs> hammer at the Canadian seniors. So, good stuff there. Anyway, uh, Andrew Simmons and uh, Alex's first rock came into the top eight foot. Aaron Felton then uh, executed a nice corner guard, and now Alex yeah. was asked. Alex Smith was asked to throw a center guard, and uh, he has made a nice rock. Uh, Lambs was going right after him here now. He's going in behind the corner. Yep. He's going to try and do all he can to go for the deuce. Mark, when we were in Vernon, BC, there uh, you you went to Calgary, I think, to see your son. Alex stayed around. Uh, his wife Leslie came up and they did a bit of skiing. He does like the downhill ski. And uh, great country out there in BC for skiing. It is indeed. Lots of mountains around. This looks like a pretty nice rock here. Nice weight. Got a good finish. I think he's mostly around the corner. He is. That's a pretty good shot. And now Simmons is going to put a bit more traffic up front and uh, has called for another guard. Uh, from his second Steve Trickett. And yeah, this is going to come right down to the wire. Mark, I think he's looking for a one on this, which, you know, we talk about the zones. A high guard is a one if you're watching at home and not familiar with the numbering. Uh, kind of midway is a two and to tight to the rings is yeah. three. And, yeah, just trying to keep the separation. And with no hesitation now, Ryan McNeil Lanswood has up, uh, gone up there. and Well, with the angles feel, here, you could get the double on the guards and the rock in the rings. Yeah, you could get all three moving, Mark. It's going to be. That is definitely a possibility with this rock. That's not exactly the call. But they got one out, and the rock that was behind the guard in the center line is now open. So there's a good and bad result of that rock. And Simmons is calling a uh, timeout here. Yeah, it was kind of unfortunate, Mark, that he plugged on his own because that was tucked in nicely in behind that corner guard. Uh, so a little unfortunate for Graham Weagle on that shot. But as you said, uh, he did move that rock that was behind the center line, around the center line. He moved that out into the open. And now well, Andrew Simmons and team are going to have a good chat about how they're going to well, yeah, from the Simmons' point of view, there's, there's two corners and a center guard, so it's probably too late to start peeling guards. Okay, so that option's off the table. So his options are to guard the rock in the 8-foot, which is probably not the preferred option, or come around the center. So if he comes around the center, uh, I think that negates... Lambswood going around the corner because now there's going to be two rocks in the eight foot or better. So Lambswood would probably have to play a hit, assuming that the come around is buried. He's probably going to play a hit on the rock in the eight foot, but he can't afford to roll to the corner guard because if he does, Simmons comes around the middle again, 
And now there's two rocks that Lambda would have to move, potentially, to score two. So all of a sudden now, Simmons has an option to force all the play into the middle here. And I think the shot to do that is a come around. Yeah, Mark, there's two corner guards, but it's kind of, you know, if you start peeling, uh, Lambswood only needs to get a deuce. He's still going to have at least one corner guard. I think he, you're right. I think he's got to start to bring the play to the center line. And, you know, we see uh, out there now uh, Dave Naftal is the fifth for this Andrew Simmons team. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, and I haven't pulled out one quote in three three broadcasts, well, one WWE quote, Andrew Simmons, Dave Noftel, and I are big wrestling fans. And right now in the arena, you can cut the electricity with a knife. Oh, well, all I know is this is not a sailor white call. <laughs> but now they're, they're going to play a hit and roll off the corner guard. I, I don't know unless you, even if you roll to the middle here or guard that shot, I, I still think Lambert is going to get first crack to come around. So I don't know how much this is going to help you out. Because the way they're lined up, if you're asking me, is the play is going to be taken to the middle anyway. Mark, I think dependent on how this end unfolds, that particular rock that was just played, we're going to talk about that for a bit in terms of how that factored into this game ending. And Lammy is going right behind the corner guard and going to try to tuck one in there now. This is curling awful hard. Is he going to get a buy, Mark? They're really working it. And... Oh, baby. oh, he just got a buy. I don't know how much that's exposed on the out turn. Well, doesn't matter. Simmons is going to come around. And as we say, the game is on. Second half of the 10th end. One point difference in score. Yeah, we said Graham Weagles made some big shots, and he just made another one. Got that right in behind the corner guard, and he's forced the issue with Colin Thomas. Uh, Colin now would like to come down, Mark. He, ideally, he just wants to outcount that one, freeze to it. This right. I, I don't hope. know. I don't know what happened to this. If it picked or he just got it going, but this is. Oh boy. Now. Mark, I don't care what level you're playing at. You never want to see that. And we're in the 10th end of a crucial game. A crucial game. And a pick is just, that is devastating. But now that said, Daniel Bruce still needs to hit and stay here. A lot of weight. A lot of weight. Trying to work it at the end to get the curl so that they keep the shooter, Mark. This is huge if it hangs on. Ooh. Oh, ooh. hard to tell if it's a biter or not. It may just be a nibbler. From Andrew Simmons' reaction, and we're we're standing right over the sheet. It's really tough to tough to see if it's in or not. But I think Andrew believes that rock is in the house. It is really, really close. close. The reaction was that is a biter. I think it's in. From our viewpoint, Mark, I do think that rock is in the house. Now, again, going back to that rock, that was an awful lot of weight on a rock that you needed to stay on in the 10th end. So, I, you know, I thought they would have played it down a lot. Well, Collins got a rebound after that first rock, Mark, and try and put this in there. If he can draw it down and freeze they're, to this, he may save hard. the He's end. hard. They need to be shot rocking this or it's no good. So it's going to over curl on him. So now. Just came up a little light, and uh, he is second shot. But as you said, Mark, he really wanted to be shot on that one. I think now uh, Lambswood, uh, uh, Ryan's first call was to go wide to the eight foot. I think then what happens is you're forcing Simmons to come around the middle one, and that would negate the two you got in there. So I think now you got to come around. If you can come around to the top of the four foot, your deuce is still alive, albeit you might have to draw the four foot for the second point, but the shot is there to win the game. But you can't be deep on this. You can't this, be deep. Just top four foot and you have a honey. This is Dan Bruce's last rock of the 10th end. And it's a great, great throw. He puts that in a great spot, Mark. Yeah. He's, he's just a, he's a, he's a really strong player. 
That is a big shot. As are the rest of the guys, but that's a big time curling shot in a big, big pressure shit situation here. So Simmons has got to come around. He's trying to sit right on that now. And what, what's going to happen now? If he can freeze on top of that, he's trying to shrink the scoring area for uh, Ryan Lamswood here. So we're in the 10th end, and we're down to Skip Rocks. And Ryan McNeil Lamswood is in search of the deuce to win this game, and he is lying too right now. But the opposing skip, Andrew Simmons, is trying to put a draw right on top of the stone that was just delivered from Dan Bruce. And as you said, Mark, that would significantly cut down the scoring area. And they are working this hard. They're working as it comes this hard. Down the ice. He, has, he needs to get by. And... They've I don't come know. right off it, Mark. Uh, again, I don't know that. I don't know if it was light or he just picked up something, but that that was not. Uh, well, they were working it right. Out, they were working the it right off his hand, so that indicates to me that he, the sweepers thought he was light when he let it go. But that's that's a lot light. That's ten or twelve feet short. So, Mark, to make life well, really difficult for Andrew Simmons now, do you come down and go right on the top of your own or top eight even? If, uh, if Lambswood can draw on top of his own here, you're asking me, the jig is up. So, well, all all he's going to have left is one of these angles over on the left-hand side here to get in there, like that blue one to get it slashed in. He, there won't be any other shot. But you don't want to call him bounce off this and give him something. Yeah, you absolutely don't want to bounce off this, Mark. No. You can't so, afford the, the to do line that. Looks, the line looks pretty good here. Yeah, this is looking like a pretty good shot, Mark. If they can lay that right on top, which is what's where it's going to be, that's a great shot. Wow. Now, I don't know what Andrew got. I he, got he got that double raise, but he got a double the rocks in the forefoot. And, I mean, that's three-quarters frozen. I, I don't know. He can draw around to the back of the button, but he's probably still going to be partly exposed. He'd give uh, Ryan he got the, the end. He got, he got the blue one over on the side, the high the high corner guard to slash it in. But, again, the way the rocks are lined up, to make the double, your shoes are probably going to spill off. So, that's... Mark, I think he's looking at the double run on those two blues, but... He's got to make it perfect to get rid of those two yellows. Well, I don't and think I, that his I think if you're playing the double run on the two blues, if you can make the double run, but your blue one freezes the top one and just and, you're, and yeah. yellow's only lying one, you're giving him a draft to the forefoot for two, but he got to make it. If he doesn't make it, you're going to an extra end. So that's how that's going to pan out. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's about as good as he could do right now if he played that shot. I mean, to think that he'd make the double run and make the double and double out those yellows, that's probably expecting a little too much. I think you're absolutely right. He has to dead nut it. Uh, or, you know, we saw Alex Smith earlier tap, you know, come back button and try and sliver behind those. But as you said, he's going to be exposed. He won't be fully buried, and Ryan McNeil Lambs would then be able to throw a pick well, the other he shot he got is he can, he can try to draw around to the back of the forefoot and lie second shot. Yeah. He might be, he, the way that curls are, you might get two-thirds underneath and be second, but Lambs would still have a shot for the second point. Would. Yeah. I think if you're, if you're trying to come around and, you're, and you're, your shot rock, you're going to be 90% 90, 90 open. So. And right from the get-go... Uh, when uh, Ryan made that rock, you could see Simmons signaling with his broom the double double run, and I think that's the shot that he has in his head. And as you know, Mark, from skipping for many years, if you get a shot in your head, and that's the one you see, that's the one you got to play, and that's what Absolutely. they've opted to do. Absolutely. Big shot here, double run back, trying to nut it on the top one to lie second, and he's going to give Lambford a draw for two if he makes it. And if he doesn't make it, Lambswood doesn't even have to throw his last rock. rock. No, I don't think. 
No, and the jig is up. So, Team Ryan McGill, McNeil Landwood runs to 4 0. Pretty much the start they were hoping for. Andrew Simmons falls to 3 and 1. And we've had a barren burner of a game, Steve. And it's been a great uh, great game to, to commentate, Mark. And you can see the excitement in those young fellas. Uh, they're at 4 0, and they are very much in the mix of this 2024 20, Newfoundland Tankard. Mm -hmm. Next draw is tomorrow. There is no draw tonight. Uh, we'll have two games streaming. So for now, on behalf of Mark Noseworthy and our technical director, Trevor Bartlett, Steve Sporty Bragg saying so long from the St. John's Remax Center. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.